Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and Part 18 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Squad 77 travels to the Fourth Dominion to make their way to the Infernal Parade and rescue their friends and confront the hellish Ringmaster. And here's Bentley Widget to fill you in. Bentley here. As we made our way home from Darthur City, we found out from Renfrew that there's a circus that might match the description of where Ralph was taken. The only problem is it's in the Fourth Dominion on the outskirts of Patashqua near Van Eff. Does somebody want to recap where we were, uh, where we left off? Um, okay. Okay. So I, I believe that we went to Patashokra on the outskirts of Vanef, and we uh, we just entered the circus where we believe uh, Ralph might have been taken. Oh snap! Right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So after uh, after defeating the Hand of the Unbeheld um, for the second time, you guys went. Uh, you you drove uh, took the drive back to um, back to Isordorex. Uh, skipping the opportunity to do research at the library and you went uh, and you took your transport back Bentley stayed behind to be able to allow you to get back and Renfrew said that uh, he would go with you uh, to go check out the circus he was the one that remembered about this this traveling circus and wondered if it was the same same thing that uh, that you guys were talking about yeah that you heard from Ralph that he was stuck in a, in a circus and so, um, so Renfrew decided to go with you, and uh, and uh, Pageant Storm, the EPAC, uh, decided to uh, contact headquarters and tell them that basically there's almost no one left in their squad, and uh, try to give a report about what happened. Um, so you made your way to the circus. It was only about a 15 minute drive, and. Uh, on the outskirts of Patashqua, and now you're, you've uh, gone through the gate, and you you started heading into the uh, the big old coliseum-like circus tent, the main event. And, uh, yeah, and that's where we're at. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Gus, or anything you wanted to, to do or, or prepare for or talk about before you go in? Uh, well, I want to make sure that my weapons are kind of, you know, not showing. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure that we're not walking into the big tent full of, like, guns showing and stuff. You have a, a, an assault rifle. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's under my cloak, I guess. Okay. Yeah, if you can, if you Stealthily can putting in, my dagger in yeah. my boot. If you can sneak <laughs> a tell. Subway sandwich into the movie theater, then you, you can. can tell I have zero experience with guns. <laughs> I don't even know how long that's supposed to be. Um, so I'll just say my bows for decoration. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, the Carnies didn't say anything when we bought the tickets, right? So I guess we're good. Yeah. Sometimes you get really odd things coming at, at these places, so I'm just going to pull it <laughs> off like I'm all good. Yeah. What, this isn't Comic-Con? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So as you make your way in, uh, you start to you. Uh, I, I do want to apologize to everybody. My sound is not very good. My microphone cut out, and I'm using my phone as a microphone right now. So that's why. If you're, somebody's asking, "What's hey? What's the deal?" Um, my computer is having some problems, to, um, and I don't know what the deal is. But we'll make do. As as you make your way inside, you you notice that that. Uh, You've got some kind of large bench seating. Uh, you walk in on the stage, but you have to walk up onto the seats. And there are big open spaces. You're kind of at the front of the line as far as like uh, coming in, so there aren't very many people in here to start with. So you can either choose to kind of spread out or you can sit together. Um, I signal to you guys. I'm like, guys, should we like let's let's sit together just in case something happens. I don't what do you know guys think? anybody. I'm scared of these people. I want to sit with y'all. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's a good idea. Or, or I'm maybe not good in large crowds. Or, or maybe not like all together, but like in mm -hmm. the same general vicinity, so that there's a little bit of room between us in okay. case we need to make room. Sure. Yeah. Maybe okay. Two groups would be cool. Two groups. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess Renfro is a arranged guy. So. Uh, Maybe you can sit on one end of the, the 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 bleachers, and we can sit on the other end. That way, we can cover more area. That's great. Yeah, we we don't want them like surrounding us, so it's best to kind of like be in the same place, but not like all together. Okay, I'll sit with Renfro. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll I'll go to the other side of the place. Who wants to join me? Zoe? I'll join you. Okay. Sure. All right, cool. All right, so I guess me, Zoe, and Matt sit in one area of the bleachers. Is this like a semicircle, Ryan? Or like a circle? Uh, we can uh, we can load into uh, roll 20 here and, and see. Sure. It's a cool clip. There we go. Oh. Oh, there it is. I feel like we should probably, now that I'm looking at it, sit diagonal from each other. Totally. Yeah. That way we have a clear sight, line of sight. Okay. I'm going to sit on this bottom part here. Okay, I'll sit on the end. So you can see uh, uh, on, on the south there, uh, there are cages. Uh, one of them has Ralph in it. Yeah, yeah, I see some cages. Uh on my side of the uh to my right okay so i kind of i kind of signal to you guys like zoe and matt like hey you see him it's right there i guess we're just uh seeing how it plays out i'm staring straight at him what cage is he in ryan i'm just like waving at him uh the one by the clown cars the one all the way on the right yeah oh okay yeah 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 i was splitting the screen so this is pretty big there we go Okay, I see him. Clown cars. Oh my god. <laughs> you see some handlers over there um, with uh, food, and, and uh, they're the ones who are who uh, apparently mess with the cages. Are we going to entertain this? Or are we going to try to rescue our boy? Yeah, so it's... we're on a rescue hunt. Yeah, I think that's the idea. But we got to see. We got. How do we get close to? It? Uh, we got to figure out a way to get close to it and see if we can unlock his cage, I guess. Uh, we, we also need to figure out it, who exactly we're going to be fighting. Are we fighting just the bad guys that have done this to him, or is the crowd going to play into it, too? Yeah, good point. Good point. We got to be stealthy about this, I guess. I guess we're all kind of sitting away from each other right now. I thought we were going to do two groups. I thought we were going to be in groups. I was just kind of waiting, and then I could, I'm i I'm just struggling with my vision, but okay. I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're over here. I moved um, I moved uh, to the to the right. 
Um, yeah, she's on that front, okay. first row on the top right. I move, right. My, little, I move okay. my little person. I can so move this the, planning oh, and, and talking here? to each other might be tough if you guys aren't sitting with each other. I'm, I moved over I'm here. I'm going so to that go to the upper right as well. Yeah. Okay. There. Love um, it. Somehow. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm there. There's Matt. There's Zoe. So standing yeah, up high about uh, about 10 or 15 feet above you, uh, you you, you uh, start to see that uh, the Terrence, the sorcerer, he's up there with a microphone and he starts ta- he starts addressing the crowd. He says, I'm so I'm glad so you glad got, you your, got tickets your tickets for tonight's, for tonight's main, main event. event. Two, Two enemies. enemies. Wonders, Wonders from the, from the fifth, fifth Dominion, Dominion have agreed, agreed to settle, to settle the, score the score here, here for your for amusement. Your amusement. We have we the have lizard, lizard man, man. Reptilithor. He, he lived a peaceful life, life with his mate until, until she died, died and left him in charge of the precious, precious eggs. eggs. Then, then who should, who should come, come along but, but the sea bird, bird who mercilessly, <laughs> mercilessly <laughs> ate his eggs? <laughs> Reptilithor <laughs> cursed him to a life of immortality and regret. He will never be able to forget the impact of eating those eggs. So their fight tonight will settle the score for good. Marketing. And so, uh, and then one of the handlers comes over and unlocks, I can't control the handlers, but he goes over there and uh, unlocks uh, Ralph's cage. Okay, well, that settles opening the cage. I, I say to, like, uh, Richard. Yeah. Let's see what happens. If things start getting bad for, for our man, um, Ralph there, we might have to intervene. Okay, well, so uh, we'll do this ahead of time then. Have everybody kind of roll their initiative now, and then you can decide when you want to jump in or if you want to. If that's oh, okay dude. for everybody. I got a four, four plus three, seven initiative. Oh. I'm not prepared for this at all. I got a 20. <sighs> nice. And you're closest to the cage. I know where you're yeah. furthest away. Yeah. I got Close a 19. 11. Okay, I heard 20 from Renfrew, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, seven. Seven, Richard, over here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, four plus three. Okay, what about Ralph? What's your initiative? Uh, me, me that. I rolled an 18. Okay. Wait, total 18 or you rolled 18? Uh, 18, 19, 20. So it's total of 20. Okay. And Musette? I got a 19 total. Okay. I basically just am the one who's the least prepared. (laughs) Okay, uh, Richard, what's yours? 11. Okay. And Rob, you're doing Jonathan, right? Yeah, 18. 18, okay. Okay, so Ralph, you're up first. Uh, You see that uh, Jonathan is up flying around up above. Mm. Hey, Jonathan, there he is. It's the birdie. Yeah, so what are you going to do? Well, I'm just kind of hanging out here. Okay. Uh, What's this, a ball? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it is. (laughs) Reptilithor? Yeah. Balls are cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and... And I'm sure I know you know this, but the, of course he made up that whole that whole origin story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why I said it's a wrestling thing. thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. a wrestling thing. You're. Yeah, yeah. The wizard's like Mean Gene. So I guess I'm just gonna come over here and uh, pick up this ball and dribble it. Okay. Uh, All right. Sounds good. I don't see any sense in uh, picking fights with anyone who's not wanting to fight with me. All right. Shrugs. Uh, uh, Renfrew, it's your turn. Oh, well, and also, if you want to hold an action, you can do that, but you have to say what it is. So when you hold an action, you say, I'm going to do this when this happens. So that way you don't lose your turn. So you can, uh, so Ralph, you can do that if you want to do if you want to do that, or you just want to do a little ball, you can do that. Too. I'm just going to stand over here and play with this ball and... Uh... Okay. And see what happens. All right, sounds good. Uh, Renfrew. 
I definitely would like to make sure I'm holding an action for my arrow to, and so basically, can I, I don't know if I have, you said I have to choose a person, but I'm kind of yeah, like, to... if Ralph is getting attacked, then I want to be able to strike back kind of deal. Okay, so no. you're aiming at, uh, you're aiming at Jonathan? Yeah, I guess so, okay. yeah. If, if they actually engage in combat, then I'm going to be ready, and that's, and I'll mention it over, um... Wait, you're aiming at Jonathan? He's a if friend. There's attacking. Oh, okay. And so it's just a hold. Right. And I think right. Trudovir, you can't talk to her because you're or to no. him because you're I, across I, the the. Yeah. I'm right there on the lower left corner. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll just mention it to to my neighbor to say, hey, just prepping. Okay, Zoe. Like uh, what are you gonna do? Okay. Um, we still don't know what's going on with these two, because um, I, I got this this really weird feeling like that one episode of Angel where they had to fight, and so I had this bad feeling that they're going to be made to fight whether they want to or not. So I'm looking at the map. I'm not seeing any way to get on the other side uh, without um, bringing attention to myself. <sighs> Because I can't go behind the cages because there's no... Well, can I climb up on top of that stuff that's behind the cages and, and start making my way over toward Ralph? Mm. Or is that going to be too much of a giveaway, you think? I think that's the wall of the tent. Oh. Um. Mm. I mean, you could probably try to get behind the carts and go behind the cages. Yeah, but that's still out of range for. I, I was I was yeah. thinking about two different spells that would protect either one or both of them, oh, at some yeah. point, mm. and I, they're they're still just outside my re, my range. Um, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move six seats down, under the premise of getting a better look, and I'll I'll very loudly say, you know what, I want to see this a little bit better. I'm moving. And that way, you know, people don't pay so much attention to me. And meanwhile, I'm slowly but surely trying to make my way closer, at least to Jonathan. Yeah, so you're like 35 feet away from him or something? Uh, probably. And I think my, I think the range on this one spell is only like 30. So I need to get just a little bit closer. So I'm just going to move and, and just loudly say that I'm, I'm moving to get a better seat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just moved six seats down. <laughs> So, um, Renfrew, you, when you when you drew your bow and you're aiming it at Jonathan, are you trying to do this in a way that people other people can't see it, or are you just really blatantly just standing up and aiming a bow at at one of the <laughs> no, people? No, I'm still there? seated, and um, you know, it's just kind of like I'm kind of primed, but it's not like I'm flashing it up there for everybody to see, kind of thing. No. Uh, okay. So you uh, make a sleight of hand to, to uh, make it so it's not obvious that you're aiming a bow at uh, oh my at Jonathan. Um, I I rolled an eight. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, oh, that's a little more obvious. Fair enough. But hopefully, all right, and, uh, again, uh, M Musette's turn. Okay, so um, where is um? What's his name? Lion Man? Sorry, I meant our announcer person, but I think I just found them. They're over there by Zoe, is that correct? Yeah, but he's up He's up like another 10 feet the, higher than you at the top of the uh, the high wire. Either way, post. he's too far away. <laughs> uh, too too um, far away to, to what? For, for um, this spell. So uh, I want to go ahead and cast Bardic Inspiration for Ralph. Okay. Um, I believe, yeah, 60 feet. Yeah, we should be good. And, it, it, and that's um, a D8, right? I right. He gets, uh, yeah. he gets an inspiration D8. So, Joe, you get a D8. Um, and then it says, for 10 minutes, the creature can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. This can be added after seeing the roll, but before knowing the outcome. Okay, so, Joe, you hear that? You get an extra D8 for a... Ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Nice. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to stay where I am, otherwise. Okay. Uh, next is Jonathan's turn. 
So basically, um, Jonathan Jonathan disappears. Okay. He disappeared out of thin air, or just flew away? No, he just disappeared. Oh, okay. Probably got some sort of. Rage. And then this guy appears. Is that a dog? Oh, Doomhound. The Hound of Ill Omen. Hey, Ooh. puppy. Puppy. <laughs> You're my best friend. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm, Rouse is gonna pet the puppy. Okay. Okay. Is is uh is the hound gonna attack? Okay. If he's if he's meant to get a separate initiative, that means he gets his own turn. He's gonna bite Ralph. Ow! Or try to. Okay. Bad uh, dog. A, Bad dog. Attack at disadvantage because of uh, Ralph's robe. Or cloak, right? Not robe. Five plus five, so ten to hit. Ten to hit? Yeah. <laughs> that was his worst. Uh, okay, does that does ten beat your armor class? Ralph? Uh, no. My armor okay. class is fifteen. Yeah, so, alright then. Um... All right, so next up, uh, Terrence, you hear him get on the microphone, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, what have we here? Spies from the 5th Dominion here to stop the fight. Here to tell you how to live? What do you think about that? Throw those spies into the arena, will you? You're going to get one hell of a show. And he says, and Jonathan, while I appreciate that you're doing your best, the crowd doesn't want to see an invisible fight. Renfrew, the crowd kind of stands up and uh, and is looking at you with your holding your bow out. And uh, they start pushing you out into the arena. Um, so make a strength check with disadvantage. Because you're you're fighting against multiple people. All right, then. So with disadvantage, that would be 10. Okay, you, they, well, they, they got, uh, they got two threes. So I rolled really badly. So you managed to kind of squeeze and dart your way uh, out from, out from them and, and, uh, and work your way away, a little bit away from the crowd. So I would say you probably moved up to the top while they were trying to push you down. So this round, you're safe. And I think no one else has done anything that makes them really obviously. I'm just oh. sitting here sipping my tea. <laughs> yeah. So he and he yells, "Come on, Come on put your put backs, your backs into, into, it. into it!" <laughs> All right. And yeah, I need help fighting a dog. Then he says, "Where is Terrence, Ryan?" Uh, the He's standing wizard? up on. He's standing on the post uh, up high, like 10, 15 feet up from you. Uh, the post that leads between the high wires, or that's on one end of the, oh, the left end of the right high there. wires. Okay, next yeah. to someone dressed in green. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right. Okay. He's really close to so, me. Cool. So one of the handlers comes out and unlocks the cage for this uh, golem. And then he runs for it. Terrence, in the rest of his turn, says, uh, let's even let's the even odds, the odds a, bit. a bit. This clown, this clown used, used to run, to the, run show. the show. And you hear a, a clown that's standing that's uh, that's standing farther away from him say, wait, what? And he says, um, now, now he's going, he's to, going fight to fight these, these invaders. invaders. Poor old Poor Tom. Old. And he shoves Tom from the top of the, uh, from up on top and, and pushes him down uh, onto the ground. <laughs> Yeah, and, and he's, he falls kind of on his face and, and gets up and he says, what the hell, Terry? And uh, <laughs> and then he throws a sword down at him. and uh, But he manages to dodge out of the way. He says, thanks uh-huh. a lot. And um, he says, poor Tom, poor Tom don't, don't worry, worry, you're not alone. alone. In, life, in life, you stabbed, stabbed her in the back. In the back. But now now she's she's made made sure sure she does the stabbing stabbing. time Time six. six. It's It's Mary Mary Slaughter. Slaughter. And uh, and then one of the one of the little guys (laughs) goes over there and opens the gate for Mary Slaughter. And then he runs back over here. Oh, that's really good. 
And um, so you see Mary, who is kind of this ghostly figure, kind of hover out of the uh, out of the cage, and there are six swords circling around her. Hmm. They're just swirling really fast, or are they going slow? Yeah. How are they swirling? Uh, yeah, really slowly, kind of circling around her. Okay. Wards. I'm sure they're going to speed up. Okay, and then he says, uh, and, and we all we remember all the city of Carantica, uh, uh, right? Carantica, right? He says, well, well if, you, if forgot, you forgot, you can you thank, thank the Sabaticus. And, the, and another guy opens, comes over here and opens the cage for the Sabaticus, which is this big old reptile-looking thing that, uh, that Ralph saw earlier in the cage. And of and course, of course if, in case there's case anything, anything left, left, the golem, the golem Elijah, Elijah is ready, ready to, squish to squish them into the dirt. The dirt. <laughs> All right. Um, so it is Richard's turn. And Richard, of course, you see all these uh, all these characters and creatures have kind of. If everybody's been, I lean over to uh, Chertevere and I'm like, "Hey, man." Is there any way we could just take out this Terrence guy? It kind of seems like everybody's being held against their will and being forced to fight. Yeah, that's that's what I'm working on here. That's uh, I'm just waiting for the turn. My plan is to uh, to throw a, a a spell at Terrence, but I'm just kind of biding my time. Uh, I don't really want to out myself, so I just kind of like pull my pistol and like cock it to make sure it's ready to shoot. But uh, I kind of keep it out of sight. Like I said, I'm still not trying to out myself. I'm just okay. getting it ready. Make a sleight of hand check. 19. Uh, you were noticed. He says, ah, there's one of them right there. See, with the gun? He says, push him out. And so make a, the, the crowd starts shoving you down into the ring. Uh, make a strength check with disadvantage. Oh, uh, with disadvantage. So twice yeah. and take the lower. Well, there's a 10. Yeah. yeah. And a 9. So a 9. Okay, uh, I rolled a five and a two again, so you you beat them. <laughs> I, I'm I'm I don't maybe I should pick some different dice. I think they're doing great. Wait a second, yeah. where's these imposters? I'm not an imposter. Yeah, so you you um they they, they kind of shove at you and you manage to um to hold them off for that amount of time. I try and to persuade Ren them that I'm not a bad guy. So Renfrew, the while Jonathan didn't directly attack Ralph, he did uh, he did create a. a magical hound that that attack him so did you want to uh, have your arrow come kind of come into play here and, and shoot at the hound or shoot at jonathan yeah so i know that came from jonathan that's a good question uh make an insight <laughs> check <laughs> Because up to this point, I was clueless. Yeah, yeah, you're, you, I don't know that you'd have, uh, that you would have, uh, I mean, uh, his friends, the rest of his friends would recognize this hound. He's done this before. But you may not, you may not know that. Uh, 13? Okay. Uh, I would say since it happened, yeah, since it happened right around the time that uh, he went invisible, that it's probably, that probably came from Jonathan. Okay. So, then, um, yeah. You could make an attack roll with disadvantage if you just kind of close your eyes and listen. Then, yeah. That's that's what we're doing. That was what my plan was. You're so listening I to his that. wing flaps. Okay. Make an attack. Okay. And since it's a held action, you really just get one attack instead of two. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> but I rolled 19 both. <laughs> wow. Okay, 19 plus like 11 or something, right? Right, that's what I was trying to find is... Okay. Right. Yeah, 19. So it'd be 23. Yeah, that that definitely hits, right, Rob? I, I think that's uh, that beats Jonathan's armor class. Yeah. Okay, uh, so roll your damage. Right. And does he lose his invisibility when he gets hurt? Uh, he Is has to a make a concentration a concentration check. Hmm. Yeah, and technically Jonathan cast the spell before he turned invisible uh, instead of after, because you can't cast a, cast spells no. while you're invisible. 
I'm just doing a standard. You can with greater invisibility, but it's a concentration spell. But that's, he's, is he using greater invisibility? Yes. Is the hound also a concentration spell? No, that's just a, it's just a feature. Oh, okay. I don't know where he got it from. Okay. It's a sorcery feature, I think. Oh, okay. And eight. is uh, eight damage? Yeah. Okay. So you just for two. a standard attack. Yeah. I, I'm assuming okay. I can't put extra stuff on it at this point. Uh, what? Oh, well, yeah. You you have to do a bonus action to do like hunter's mark and stuff like that. You could do okay. that on your next turn. Yeah. All right. So next up is the Sabbaticus. Uh, if nobody else had any held actions for that, right? I think that was the only one. Uh, have, I, have I had a turn yet? Not yet. You're going to be okay, next. Okay. Okay, after okay. the Sabbaticus. Yeah. And it... Not seeing anybody else to go after it uh, in, the, in the arena, it goes after Ralph. Yeah. <sighs> Knocks the ball right out of your hand. You Ow. bastard! <laughs> you just kind of slap the ball out of your hand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> well, why would you do that? Are you gonna come at me, bro? So it's going to bite at you and make two claw attacks. So the first one is at disadvantage, right? The bite. Ooh, twenty-four to hit. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that time I rolled really well. I got an 18 and a 19. You hit me 24. Uh, right. Yeah, 24 to hit. And the damage is 17 damage. Okay. And then he gets two claw attacks. And they're not at disadvantage anymore because you're for this round, your quote's not working since you got hit. Okay, well then I'm going to hit him with Hellish Rebuke as a reaction. Oh, okay. We'll do that first, then, before his other attacks. Okay, and uh, that's a saving throw, right? Uh, yeah. Dexterity, Dexterity? 15. Dexterity, Dexterity 15. All right. Uh, when you cast this spell using a spell slot, a second level or higher damage increases by 1d10 for each slot level above 1. Okay. So he he made it. He, he got a um, 19. So does he does he take half damage or no damage? He takes half damage. Okay, yeah. So go ahead and roll the damage. Okay, that's the ten. Or it tells you. Yeah, all one d ten. That's a seven. Oh, seven. Okay, he takes seven damage from your hellish rebuke. That's pretty cool. You can hurt him when it's not even your turn. Okay, so I hit cast. All right, cool. All right, and now he's going to do his other two claw attacks. Okay. So 25 to hit. Yeah. And uh, nine damage. Nine damage. Hold on. And Damn it. 12 to hit. 12 to hit? My armor yeah. class is 15. Yeah, so he missed. So he, still... he, uh, he bit he bit into you pretty hard, and and uh, and your cloak sort of st- sort of shut down, and and you're you're not as blurry anymore. And then so... and then he, when he saw that, he grabbed, and he he then he took some he he jumped out of the way and got singed uh, from your from your rebuke, and then he clawed you. But I got nine damage. Yeah. Okay. Chertovir, you're next. So since I'm right there. I'm going to, uh, is it possible for me to cast a spell with stealth so people won't see that I did it? Because I was thinking about- Yeah, you, about... you would just do, well, you, you, if you read if you read the spell descriptions, they'll yeah. say like VSM for like, they, if they have verbal, somatic, or, or material components. So that'll yeah, kind one... of determine how difficult it is to hide the right. spell. This one says components V, S, and M. Yeah, and so it's that a means concentration. You, you, say, you have to say something, you have to move your hands, and you have okay. to pull out like spell components. Okay, so I guess I wouldn't be able to just try to stealthily do that. Uh, it said concentration chooses five good f- 
foot square unoccupied space on the ground that you can see within range. I wanted to cast um, Maximilian's Earthen Grasp second level transmutation and create okay. this this uh, hand made out of the compacted soil come up and grab, uh, you know, Terrence. I can also, uh, as an action, cause the hand to crush the restrained target who must make a strength saving throw. Grab Terrence. Okay, well, he's... he's On a, top of a from stick, the, right? Yeah, he's like a good... He's, from the ground, he's probably 20 feet up. Okay, so can I can't it, use can that. Can it reach Never that mind. high? No. Okay. Just within five feet of it. It's just like something comes out oh, of the okay. ground. I didn't know that it could... Yeah. But there's lots of other targets on the ground, too. Yeah, so, okay, instead of doing that, uh, then instead of Terrence, I'm still going to be using the uh, Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. It says here, range area 30 feet. Uh, let's see, 30 feet. One moment. Let me take a look at the map here. Um, yeah, I can definitely cast Maximilian's Earthen Grasp on the clown. Oh, okay, on Tom? Yeah. All right, yeah, that's Tom Requiem. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's the saving throw for that? Okay, let me see. Maximilian's Earth and Grass. So I'm going to cast that. I got a slot. It says, um, attack, save, strength 15. That's okay. what it says here. Is that what we need? Yeah, he got a 7. So okay, he so failed. Now, okay, so now I roll for damage? Uh, yes, exactly. So it's 2d6. Oh my God! Snake eyes. Holy crap! <laughs> okay, so he got two. He took two damage, but is he being held now? Uh, so he can't. Yeah. Do so it says. So it says a medium hand made from compacted soil rises there and reaches for one creature you can see within five feet. The target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes two d six bludgeoning damage, and is restrained for the spell's duration, which is one minute. Whoa! Yeah. So he gets to. He probably gets to try to get out of it every turn, right? And as an action, I can cause the hand to crush the restraint target, who must make a strength saving throw. It takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. So can I use an action? Since I didn't move. Uh, uh, that would be on your next turn, you could do it. It's basically you're telling okay. it to squeeze him, you know, the next Understood. turn. Understood. So yeah. he is restrained, and he lost two damage points. Yeah. Uh, yep. All right. Okay, and that that's, it sounds like a concentration spell, right? So you can't yeah. cast any Less other concentration spells. Yeah, yep. and and, I'm sure unless you want to drop uh, that one. And I'm sure Terrence saw me do it, so... Yeah, and, and, and Terrence does... Because that's right happening right in front of him. So Terrence goes, ah, oh, oh, there, there we go. go. See the man See waving the man his hands around, around over there, 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 there that Push him into the ring. Okay, make a strength saving throw with disadvantage. Okay, strength saving throw with disadvantage. Let's see. Okay, first result <laughs> is a 21, 20 plus 1. Second result is a 6 plus 1, 7. So I guess we take the 7. Yeah, and uh, they got a 14. So they pushed you down into the, into the arena. Oh, man. Okay. All right, I'm down in the arena. Okay, and it does is that, the top. Does that break? Does that break his concentration? <laughs> no, if it did okay. damage, it, if it did damage, it would. Yeah. Okay. Don't give him ideas. But he didn't. He didn't fall very far, and and uh, you know his dexterity is high enough that you know. I don't well, I'm just trying to pick out him. which yeah. who my victim is going to be. Sure, sure. Oh, I see. Because there's two right in front of me. <laughs> right. I just get up and shake my my robe and go like, how rude. So Mary Slaughter sees you and kind of floats over this way, and her swords follow her. Oh, damn. I believe we're finding the Infernal Parade here. Uh, and next is Ralph's turn, and then Renfrew will be after Ralph. Ralph's turn. Yeah. So, Ralph, you got two enemies on you. You've got the uh, the Hound of Ill Omen and the, uh, and the Sabbaticus. Well, then I guess the only thing I can do is an Eldridge Blast. And I got a pretty powerful one. I have two beams, so I'm going to have, I'm going to throw one beam at each guy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Make, so that's two separate rolls to hit. 
Right. One for so each I, one. Uh, do you want me to roll and then do damage, and then roll then do damage, or do you want? Me yeah, to... yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So eighteen. That's what I rolled. Damage was three. Okay. Uh, which one is? Which one are you attacking? I'm attacking the dog. Okay, Rob. Do you know what the dog? What the hound's uh, armor class is? Uh, yeah, it's 14. Okay, so he gets hit. Oh, uh, it says 1d10 plus 3. So the damage is 6, sorry. Okay, so 6 damage to the hound. <laughs> the other ugly dude. Yeah. So you just kind of... <laughs> fire one out of each hand? Yeah. Well, I rolled an 8 for the second one, second blast. Okay, uh, 8... Total to hit? Uh, yeah, I rolled eight total is what I rolled, and I don't think that hits right. I thought your attack bonus was super high on that. Oh. Seems like eight's not possible. Eight plus seven, sorry. Okay. Fifteen. So eight is possible if you roll a one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fifteen. Okay, that doesn't. Yeah, you needed a sixteen. It doesn't hit. Damn. Yeah. Okay. So that one kind of goes wide. Um, make a, let's see. Roll another 20-sided die really quick. It's a... Can I have that? Sorry, that was a good idea earlier. I should have taken it. Five <laughs> plus seven. Okay. Okay, so that, that shot goes wide and kind of goes up into the air. I was just, if you'd gotten a one, you might have hit somebody in the crowd. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been more fun than hitting yeah. that thing. All right, uh, Renfrew, you're next. All right, then. I've been reading up a little bit, and I wanted to see. I'm not familiar with this. Um... I guess at the start of your turn, first, uh, make another strength check, because the crowd's still wrestling you and trying to throw you into the ring. But can I drink my potion of invisibility? Uh, after this part. Done. Fine. <laughs> um, 22. Really? Oh, wait, do I have to roll twice, right? Yeah, twice and take the lower number. A strength uh, saving throw. Sorry, not a check. <laughs> okay, I'll go with the 22. I rolled a natural 20 the second time. Whoa. Okay, yeah, you managed to stay up there. That's pretty good. Potion of invisibility, please. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys do notice, though, that the the more you stay up in the stands, the more uh, enemies are going to go after the people who are down below. So everybody who's down in there becomes a target. And so it started out, every everything was going after Ralph. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to you if you want to stay up in there or not. Well, um, um, I wanted to drink the potion of invincibility, invisibility, and then okay. I have this thing. I have an illusion arrow. Um, oh. And there's one that says a ghost of an ally of the enemy appears in front. I was considering throwing an illusion arrow in front of... Oh, in front of our main speaker. Oh, okay. And um, to try to stop him from yelling at all of our guests. <laughs> can, can everybody else see that illusion? I can't remember. I, I think probably uh, It's just so, the one right? sentence description. Yeah, I, do not I think that's right. Yeah. Huh, okay. But so to you're distract fire that... parents, that's what Are I want gonna... to do. Are you going to fire it at him or? Um, uh, well, it's or an illusion he... arrow, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to make it work. Like, do I hit the dude? Do I just throw you, you it? You could still him? you could still shoot him with it. I mean, it would just do normal right. arrow damage. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Okay, uh, make an attack roll. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, I rolled it. I rolled a three, but then I've got to add ten, so thirteen. Um, 
Come yeah, on. I think that misses. Yeah. But I don't know if I have to hit him to use the illusion or not. No, you don't. It, so it, uh, it's, it, you shoot it and it, it stabs into the post that he's standing on. Cool. And uh, you, sh you see this, uh, this massive uh, demonic figure appear right there. And, and he, he, uh, he looks at it and then he looks over at you and he says, Why, Why haven't, haven't they thrown, thrown you into you the, into pit, the pit, yet? pit yet? <laughs> he Fine. says good one by the way oh it doesn't work on him All right. no uh, he seems to be able to see through the illusion fair enough okay uh, but yeah you have two attacks oh Ooh. where were you yeah and you used your right. bonus action to drink the potion right so you're invisible yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully the crowd stops messing with me was the idea there. Well, and actually, when you're invisible, if you make an attack, you lose your invisibility. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take back the drink from the invisibility potion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's not really going to be very helpful. Okay. And okay. Uh, you, so you have one more attack. I'll just try to hit Terrence again. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll the hit. 24. That hits. Uh, roll your damage. And you're using a magical bow. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think I did the uh, damage wrong last time. Um, and it has acid arrows. Yeah. I can use acid arrows. Yeah. So you you uh, yep yeah you roll all that extra damage. And then um, can I? I think I can't. Wait. Can I do on its hunter? first on its first turn? It does uh, it does acid. Yeah, you can do hunter's mark. You you're not doing this since you're not drinking the invisibility potion. Hunter's mark cool. can be cast. I, I replace action. it with hunter's mark. Okay. Yeah, you've got the acid damage and the arrow damage and the hunter's mark damage. Sixteen. Sixteen total. Yeah. So that arrow uh, shoots right into him, and uh, and it looks like it does. It sinks in super deep. Uh, you do double damage, um, so that's thirty-two damage. Wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah, and he uh, he screams and he says, "Ladies, Ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, I don't, I don't ever, ever do this, do this but, but I'm getting, I'm getting involved, involved in this in fight this myself." myself. <laughs> and he jumps down into the ring. And it'll do extra acid damage later on, right? Uh, no, no, just just the one oh. time. Okay, yeah. fair. All right then. So Zoe is next, and then Musette will be after. Okay, now what I wanted to do was the uh, where is it here? Second level spiritual weapon. Okay. Um, now on spiritual weapon, it says that as a bonus action, uh, if it. Uh, if this hits and everything that I can move the weapon 20 feet and repeat the attack against the creature within five feet of it. So my plan was to try if possible to get both Terrence and Tom. Um, so oh, cause it's at second level so it can hit more than one target. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and do the spiritual weapon go ahead and cast that. And, and actually, before you do that, uh, make a strength saving throw at disadvantage because oh, the crowd okay. is is seeing you do this in there and they're pushing you out. Six. OK, yeah, they got a 15. OK, so you so... are down into the onto the ground there. OK, well, that makes it even easier. OK. Yeah. All right. All right, so I clicked on the spiritual weapon, and then I click on the hit to see whether or not it hits. Okay, and, and this is for Tom? Uh, yeah, because he's closest. Okay. Tom's closest. Okay. I did 13. Right. 13 to hit. To hit. Uh, uh -huh. That is a miss. I think. Uh, on Tom. Actually, you should have had advantage on him. He's restrained. Yeah, right? I was just going to say he's got advantage. Yeah, you get to roll again, because he's restrained, so he can't, uh, because of uh, Trudovir's earthen grasp is holding him, so he can't dodge out of the way. 
25. Woohoo! That definitely hits. Okay, so for damage. And you and you cast it at a higher level, right? So it does a little more damage. Uh, I did it on second level. Okay. I I, I did it at a fairly low level, because okay. he's he's not that strong. Uh, so I did a n nine damage on Tom. Okay. All right. He says, "Ow, Terry, this is your fault." That slashes him right on the on the face. The face that's sticking out out from the big old earthen fist that's holding him. And now he can say, do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> yeah. All right, it's Musette's turn. Yay. Okay, I am noticing about the crowd turning on everyone, so I'm going to scooch my butt away from the crowd. So okay. I'm going to scooch over here. Okay. Oh, okay. And then there's, a, yeah, well, I mean, there's only like that one person right there next to me, so I think I can take on a person if anything happens. Okay, and I am going to cast Cloud of Daggers on Sabaticus. Yeah, Sabaticus. Oh, okay. Right in his square. Like oh, in the, in actually, the middle, in, betwe in between the four squares? Can I do that? Or does yeah. it have to be inside yeah. the no, grid? No, it doesn't have to be on the grid. It, it okay. could be. Yeah. Then, yes, please. Right in the middle because it's a five foot, uh, it's a five foot cube. Yeah. And actually, uh, technically, you're you're uh, you're fighting with the crowd before your turn, right at the start of your turn, before you get a chance to move. Oh, I didn't know that they were bothering me. I thought they didn't know I was a part of this. Oh well, uh, no, that's a good point. Bad. Yeah, that's a good point. They they haven't seen you do anything until now. You're right. Yeah, so you kind of scooched away, and they don't yeah. see you doing. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I moved over here, and I'm gonna like, yeah. whisper. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, so Cloud of Daggers, I'm only going to do it at second level, um, and it's a 4d4, and it's a 5-foot cube. He's already got it. Uh, okay. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 12! Okay, 12 damage? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's that happens to him when he starts his turn, but I'll just do it now, because... Uh -huh. I don't see how he could get out of it. And then, yeah, and he uh, he also yeah starts his turn. He has okay. to get out of it. It keeps on doing the four d four. Yeah, and that's a well, concentration spell. And uh, no, I don't. A minute. So that has verbal, somatic, and material components. When you cast yes. that spell, you're you're talking and you're moving your hands. So right. make a sleight of hand check to try to hide this from the crowd that you're doing this. Copy that. Sleight of hand. Ah! Eight total. Okay. And... Yeah, they notice. <laughs> they, they start heading towards <laughs> you. Damn. Okay, sorry, what? They noticed? they noticed... They noticed and they started heading towards you. Okay. All right. And now... It is Tom's turn. So he can on his turn, right, with this earthen grasp, he can try to get out of the out of the um, out of the hand, right? He can use his action to make his strength check. Yeah, is it probably a strength saving throw? Er. Mm. And he has to beat a fifteen. But yeah, he he got a um, thirteen. So he's he failed. He's still stuck in there. Whenever. He fails a save. The target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage and is restrained for the spell's duration. But this spell okay. only lasts for one minute, so... Yeah. yeah, but one minute is ten rounds. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like a, most fights are over in less than a minute. If he if he succeeds on the strength check, then he escapes and is no longer restrained by the heat. Okay, and he failed, so go ahead and roll the 2d6 damage again. Okay. Um, let's do that. All right. This time we got four plus two equals six damage. Six damage. Okay. All right. Yeah. He 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 gets squeezed and yeah. And uh, next is Jonathan's turn. Oh, and I guess being restrained, he can't make any attacks, right, Rob? Uh, he can at disadvantage. Oh, he can. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna try to attack Zoe at disadvantage. Two long sword attacks. 
11 to hit for the first one. My armor class is 17. Okay, and the second one uh, is worse. It's 9. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he he kind of ineffectually is swinging the sword over his head because he's squished into the, into the hand, and uh, he's swinging the sword at you. But he missed both times. Okay, uh, Jonathan's turn. Okay, he's going to cast... Uh, Synaptic Static on Ralph. Okay. I'm using um, Heightened Spell on it, too, so he has to, at disadvantage, he has to make an Intelligence check, or Intelligence Saving Throw. Okay, so Ralph make an Intelligence Saving Throw at disadvantage. Intelligence at disadvantage. Yeah, the save, Saving Throw, more, not the Ability Check. Seven. What's my di- what's disadvantage though? Like uh... that means you roll twice and take the lower number. Oh, it's I forgot. It's also a, it's an area of effect. So, Sabaticus and my hound both have to do it too. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's a saving throw. What number do they have to be? Seventeen. Trying to find okay. it still. And everybody's at disadvantage. Seventeen with disadvantage. Intelligence saving throws. Well, the uh, the sabbaticus is the minus three. Wow! So he got a negative two. Okay, so Rob, what's the damage? How oh, the wolf made it? Um, twenty-seven. Jesus. Psychic damage. Yeah, and um, after a failed saving throw for one minute, um. Your thoughts are muddled, and you have to roll a d6 and subtract that number from all attack rolls and ability checks. Wow. Does he get a re-roll and concentration every round, or is it just, checks. just stuck that way? You make a, an intelligence saving throw at the beginning of each round to, to okay, break to get through. Out of it. Okay. So 1d6... Yeah. So and your you, so your damage this time was twenty seven points. Okay. So are you? Am I still having to roll? Am I, is my rolling? No, or that's I for just... next time. That's oh. for next time when you're trying to get out of it. All right. Yeah. So yeah, take twenty seven damage, and also the sabbaticus took twenty seven damage too. Uh, so there was a thought I was just curious about. I wanted to throw out there. When I threw mm-hmm. the arrow at the um, seagull, does the arrow show? <laughs> no. No, it's it's part it of it. It becomes it's, invisible? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's invisible. Yeah. Oh, you mean if it hits him, you would see yeah. like an arrow flying around? Because I, I did hit him <laughs> initially yeah. in the very first start so I was just yeah, curious just, just like if you're wearing clothes question. and stuff your your clothes are invisible oh right yeah okay so um that yeah that's the end of uh end of Jonathan's turn right or are you, is he doing anything else oh that's it okay what about the hound oh yeah the hound's gonna attack okay you guys I, I, Ralph is in trouble I miss. <laughs> okay. Probably. Well, I'll see. I haven't done it, but he's only plus five to hit. Yeah. At disadvantage. Oh, and he's at disadvantage because he's cloaked. Or no, does the synaptic static doesn't count as a physical attack, right? So that, yeah. Yeah, I don't his, think so. His cloak would still be working. Yeah, so Ralph, you it, it's like a this this sort of blinding headache and white light. You know, and and, uh, and it did. That was all mental damage. Okay. How, so how do I? So fifteen much... was the best. My other one, or was the worst. The other one was a natural twenty. Oh, okay. So fifteen to hit. Yeah. Yeah, that that hits, right? Your armor class is fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So the hound uh, attacks you. How, and what's my damage? Oh, I hate you. Got me with 20. Okay. Nine, 12 damage. Oh, 12 damage, she said. Not 20? Okay. No, that was the other attack roll. Because I was at disadvantage, I had to roll twice. 
Okay, well... Yeah, so you take 12, 12 uh, slashing damage from the, the oh hound. <laughs> who's that from? The wolf? Yeah, the uh, hound is real I'm going to hit with a reaction of Hellish Rebuke. Okay. And that's, uh, was that 15, um, 15, uh, dexterity save, right? 21. Oh, so he takes half damage. So, yeah, roll the, roll the damage for the, in, for the, um, uh, Hellish Rebuke. 24. 24. Okay, and then have t- uh, to 12, because he passed the saving throw. So he kind of, the hound sort of jumped out of the way. Uh, but still got burned. Okay. Okay, got it. Casted. And Terrence, on his turn, is going to go... Oh, wait. On a reaction, I cast it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. Terrence uh, runs to here. And then he's going to double move. He's going to use his action to move again. 40. He goes to hit there. He's headed towards Renfrew. That's too close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's his turn because he used his action to, to move again. So he's done. So these swords... Uh, and actually... Um, at the start of their turn, these swords are in this ring of fire that's sort of been building around this center stage. Uh, and uh, at the start of their turn, they're going to take 2d6 fire damage. So we got... It looks like just one of them is in it. And it takes 7 fire damage. They are going to head towards Chertovir. And actually, oh. Rob, I, I still can't control them. So can you move all those flying swords over to Chertovir? Yeah. Actually, no, half of them to Chertovir and half to, to uh, Zoe. I forgot. Did I cast Mage Armor when I got to the circus? I don't think so. I did not. Um, I don't remember. No, I don't think I did. Okay, so we'll do the three of them that are attacking true over here first. Whoa. Okay, so... That's not good. Uh, 19 and a natural 20, and then uh, 13. So two of them hit, one's a critical hit. Okay. What's the damage? Uh, it's not huge damage, let's see. Okay. So I'll, we'll do the critical hit first. So that's uh, 12 damage from one of them. 12. And the other one is not a critical hit. And it does 10 damage. So 22 damage? Or no, 8. Sorry, it does 8 damage. So 20 damage. Yeah. All right. And then the, now the three are going to attack Zoe. Down to 36 points. Um, one of them is a natural one. We got a six and a... F- 16. 16. Does a 16 hit? I don't think it does. No. Right, you have 17. 17. So yeah, they, they all miss and one of them is a... Is a um, one of them is a natural one. So it actually accidentally attacks one of its friends. Ha! And it does... Uh, Two damage to to its friend. So you didn't take any damage from the flying swords. And next up is the is the the, the golem Elijah. It can move twenty feet, and it doesn't want to go to the right towards Ralph because that would be walking through the fire. So he is going to go. Dang it! I'm trying to grab the handle to turn him around. They make they don't make this easy. There we go. Okay. And he'll move the rest of the way. He'll use his action to to do the rest of his movement. And now he's facing Chert over here. But he's not he can't attack. 
Hey, Ryan. Yeah. He stepped oh. in a trap. <laughs> he stepped in a bear trap. <laughs> in a bear trap? Yeah, uh, so the ground is made out of sawdust, and under the sawdust, this bear trap snapped up in the air. So we'll oh, see nice. if he... Uh... Now we're also finding the guy from Saw. Yeah. So he's got to make a dexterity saving throw to get out of it. He got a natural 20. So, uh, yeah, he, he met, which is... Um, that That's definitely high enough. His dexterity is terrible, but a natural 20 is really good, so... He pulls his foot up. He goes, "Whoa!" And then he goes, Whoosh, and snaps right up, right under his foot. Okay. And uh, next is Richard's turn. I'm kind of thinking that things are oh, escalating you're still, pretty You're still quickly. fighting the crowd, right? You gotta, you gotta roll a. Oh, I gotta fight these guys. Yeah, and unless you want to just jump down. I was thinking about just jumping down. Okay. And. Uh... Kind of trying to fight this Elijah dude that's rolling up on us. Okay. However, I want to hit him with my sword, not my my gun. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll uh, with my long sword, one-handed. Okay. To hit. And this is the luck blade long sword. Yes. Looks like I rolled a 19 to hit. 19 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. All right, and then one D eight plus six, nine, nine damage. damage. Okay, and you get two attacks per action. All right, so let's uh, throw a fourteen at him. It probably don't hit him. Uh, you, right. Uh, actually, that does hit. Yeah, he's Ooh. big and slow, so you, he's easy to hit. Yay! Let's slash at him one more again. Okay. With fourteen damage. Wow. Looks like he's made out of uh, compacted ash. Uh, when you slash him, you just these chunks of, of uh, ash kind of fall on the ground and mix in with the sawdust. You slash one right off, one off of his uh, off of his shoulder, and another one off of his leg. <clears throat> Very peculiar. Yeah. Okay, so the. Uh, Sabaticus. He take first of all, I we already rolled his damage for when he starts his turn in the in the blades, but he's also starting his turn in fire. And so he's gonna have to make a saving throw to jump out of that. He failed. And so he's taking two D six fire damage. Okay, yeah, so he takes uh nine nine fire damage. And he's going to move out of the fire and out of the um, cloud of daggers. So he's going to take damage getting out of the out of the daggers. So um, Musette, can you roll the the damage? The yep. Yeah, the damage for the cloud of daggers. It's four. Okay, two plus four is six. Plus four is ten. Plus three is thirteen. Wow. Okay. 13 damage from the Cloud of Daggers. And it is Churdovir's turn. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. Um, all right. So I'm going to uh, cast a Numa. Okay. Okay. At, um, let me see. So. Where is she? Okay, there's Mar Mary Slaughter. She's the one attacking me right now, right? That other creature, yeah, Elijah. She's, that's yeah, the... she's over in the in the fire. Okay, and Elijah is um, is right in front of you. That's right in front of me. Yeah. Is he is he the Ophac? He's no. a clay golem. Yeah, he's a well, clay golem. he's a he's a golem. He's a, he's actually yeah. made out of ash, but we're yeah. Okay, yeah, that's when. Richard was seeing like bits of ash fall off of him. Yeah. Okay. Can I try to cast a Numa past him onto Mary Slaughter? Let's see yeah, yeah, you should be able to do that. I would like to cast a fifth level Numa bullet. Okay. It says here okay. plus seven. I'm going to cast that, rolling to hit. 
16 to hit. Okay, and that hits. Okay, so now it says make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, the target takes 1d10 force damage. Additional d10 per spell level. This is 5th level, okay. so... It'd be 5d10 plus 3, I think, right? 5d10 plus 3, correct. Yeah. So I'll roll the first one. Okay. 12 damage. So I roll four more times? Yeah. Well, no, you don't add the, the plus three every on every die. It's at oh, the okay. End. So it's yeah. nine for the first one. Yeah. And then it's seven for the second one, which is 16. Okay. Okay. 16 with one 17. Now the fourth die is a three. So that's 20 damage. And then the fifth one, uh, uh, six, so that's 26 damage, I guess, plus Ooh, three. Okay. So 29. Okay. Wow, that's massive. So you uh, put your hands up to your face and, and and this massive ball of energy, and it gets bigger as it goes through the air, and yeah. it hits her like square in the chest, and she does 29 damage. Uh -huh. I'm and trying so to be a nice she guy. Wails. <laughs> Um, can I, can I cast a cantrip? Because I can do a second uh, thing. Um, I got. Um, I thought you could extra... do a cantrip if you're doing like a physical attack with one and a cantrip. With Is the it? Because it says extra attack in my features and traits it says yeah, you can, can attack you twice that? instead of once. Whenever you take the attack action on your turn, moreover, you can cast one of your cantrips in place of one of those attacks. No, so, I guess that's yeah. I think that's right. I mean, normally a spell takes up your whole attack action, but I think uh -huh. the way I'm understanding that, it does seem like you can do a cantrip also. In that case, I would yeah. like to uh, uh, cast um, uh, a mage armor. Oh wait, that's okay. the first level. That's not a cantrip. Okay, hang on. Yeah. What is a cantrip then? I could see uh, bu -bu 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 booming blade. Okay. Well, booming yeah. blade is something you you boom. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute! I've got a plus booming seven blade hit is like a... ray of frost with two d eight. I guess okay. I'll, I'll uh, fire the ray of frost at will. So let's see, plus seven. So I got twenty four to hit. That hits. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna launch the damage. That's well, you're aiming eight. at the at, at Mary Slaughter, right? Yes, I'm aiming at okay. Mary Slaughter. Yeah, so, so 15 damage extra. Wow. Okay. Mary Slaughter is looking in a really bad way. I mean, she's she's pretty ragged and, and uh, barely, she's ethereal, but kind of barely hanging on. And I want to thank you for that video you made, because that's where I got oh. to see features and traits and find out I have oh, an yeah. extra attack. So cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, that's Cheerleader's turn, and that's the end of round two. So we're starting round three, and it is Mary Slaughter's turn, and she's in the fire, and she's going to try to, she fails her save, dexterity saving throw, so she's going to take fire damage. She takes five fire damage, so she's hurt really bad. Let's, let's go up. And she's going to move. I think it's the anniversary today. It's, it, she wants to get to Churdle here, but it's going to be kind of hard. So she goes over to Richard. And she's going to do... Uh, or, uh, she's going to do Corrupting Touch. So she uh, grabs at you, Richard. And... Hey! 13 to hit? I don't think that hits. It does not hit. Okay. So she grabs at you, but she misses. And it's kind of shiver. Uh, make a, and and actually everybody that's within sixty feet of her needs to make a uh, a wisdom saving throw. Yes. Okay, so I'll do that as well. Uh, wisdom. No. Seventeen. No. I've got a seventeen plus six, twenty-three. Okay. okay. Wisdom save. Okay, you you passed. Um, and uh, Zoe. Fifteen. Sixty feet. 
Yeah, 15 passes also. And uh, and Chertovir passed, and Richard? Ryan, did you 17. say 60? 60 feet, yeah. That includes Ralph and the Hound. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, um, yeah, the, the Hound and, and Ralph need to make a wisdom saving throw. 11. 11? Yeah, Ralph rolled an 11, got an 11. Okay. All right, so Ralph is afraid of Mary Slaughter. Nobody else is afraid of her. I want to use my pack boon. Okay. The, the hound rolled a nine. Okay, so the hound is also afraid. When the wearer of your talisman fails an ability check, they can add a D4 to the roll, potentially turning the roll into a success. Okay, so yeah, roll a D4, which is the little pyramid shaped one. 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 All yeah. right, so that put it at uh, 12. I can't freaking yeah. get a break. So you today. needed you needed a thirteen. But yeah, you're afraid of, of Mary. But you're not really dealing with her anyway, so it's not gonna it means you have disadvantage attacking her and you can't move closer to her. Don't worry about Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh and it is Ralph's turn. Um, Arms Ralph, of Adar on both these well, first, bastards. First of all, make a dexterity saving throw because you're in the fire. Dexterity is plus two. Six. Don't forget okay. the minus the D stack, D6. How do I use oh, my yeah, part right. of inspiration that uh, Muset threw yeah, at me? Yeah, you, you can, you can you use that. Try to break out of the thing from the intelligence. The synaptic static. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Is there a way, something I can click on the D&D Beyond that can show that I want to use that? It or... just means you can roll again. Okay. And take the higher number. So, but, okay. yeah, first of all, you got the synaptic static. You probably want to get out of that. Yeah. So, so um, that's an intelligence. What's the number again, Rob? 18? 17. 17. Intelligence uh, saving throw is 17. You have to be. Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight total? Eight plus my... Plus, yeah. Wait. Nine. Ten, eleven. So, no, this still doesn't work. Okay. All right. And then the next is the um, fire that you're in. So you the dexterity saving throw. We did that. Did we do that already? No. Okay. And you, any of those, you can use your bardic inspiration to re-roll them if you want. So you, do, you can do the fire or you can do the synaptic static. Well, I think it's probably better to get out of synaptic static. Okay. Then roll again for synaptic static and use your inspiration. It's just, yeah, intelli yeah or no, intelligence is not, I'm sorry, it's not re-rolling. It gives you another D8 that you roll on top of the number to get out of the... So what did you get for your total roll? Are you still doing Santa Cruz, Joe? It was a nine. Wrong place. He got a nine, so you could roll another D8 to get out of that, but that wouldn't get you, that wouldn't be enough. Yeah. Because even if you rolled an eight, it wouldn't be enough. Well, eight would be enough. It's 17. Oh. Yeah. So you'd have yes. to roll an eight on a D8. Okay. So, All right, so... I'm just moving forward then. Okay, so um, I'm doing the fire now. Yeah, we roll a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw for the fire. Yeah. 15, 16, 17. Okay, and and then make and then roll a d6 and subtract that off of them. D6. Because of the synaptic. He's okay status, for saving yeah. throws. Except oh, he is? for concentration. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Checks. Okay, so you managed to hop out of the fire. Okay, you got out of the fire. <laughs> you okay. managed to hop out of the fire without taking any damage. Okay, I'm not in the fire. Rock and roll. Okay. All right, so now you you managed to you so now you've dealt with all of these problem things, and you actually have your turn now. You're gonna do arms <laughs> of Hadar like half an hour ago. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> arms of Hadar, you invoke the power of Hadar, dark hunger. Uh, tendrils of dark energy erupt from you and batter all creatures within 10 feet of you. Each creature that in that area must make a strength saving throw. 
On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 necrotic damage and can't take reactions until its next turn. On a successful okay. save, the creature takes half damage but suffers no other effect. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of a second level or higher, the damage increases by 1d6 for each slot level above first. So that'll be the Hound and the uh, and the Sabaticus are going yeah. within that. And so they got to make strength 15, right? Uh, yes, strength 15. Okay. Failed. So the Sabaticus failed also, so they both failed. Uh, what's the da- Can you roll the damage then? And Churdivir is going to be next after we turn. Yeah, 16. So, so I rolled a total of 16. Oh, okay. Wow. And uh, on a failed save, the target takes 2d6 necrotic damage. With oh, no, six. they can't do reactions. Oh, well, wait. You, what was the 16 then? 66 the damage. damage. Yeah, okay, so yeah. 66 damage. So yeah, it was 16 then. The da- okay, 16 damage? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Rob, is the hound still up, or is that uh, is it down yet? Uh, he's taking a lot of damage, but he's up. Okay. We'll see when the fire hits him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Renfrew is going to be next. Yep. Do and I get so to do a bonus? It, yeah, you can do bonus action. Okay. Cool. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to go ahead and do a Misty Step. Oh, okay. Get away from these two guys. And uh, one bonus Where are you action. Getting... Briefly okay. surround yourself, uh, surrounded by Silvery Mist, you teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Okay. So, bam, right there. That's 30 feet for me. All right. Good deal. Right. And then since you did Misty Step, it doesn't trigger an attack of opportunity, so they don't get to attack you. Okay. If you so just I, ran that way, that distance, they would have attacked they you. They would have fought. Okay. Yeah, because they can do reactions. Attack of opportunity. All they right. can't but do yeah. reactions after what I just, after the arms of Hadar. Oh, yeah, that's true. So. Yeah, so you I could have run that distance, I guess, instead. Nah. Okay. So the arms are the arms are clubbing them, right? But they're not. Are they? They're not. Are they restraining them? I they, they they come up and they grab them and they bash them up and down on the ground like a baby hitting a piano key. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then and do they stay or do they? Are they just one turn and they're done? The arms. Uh, I believe it's the one turn. Okay. It's an instantaneous duration. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. All right, uh, next is Renfrew's turn. And uh, you see that uh, Terrence the Sorcerer is bearing down on you, and you he was your former your former uh, teammate. Terrence is on top of me? No, he's bearing down on Renfrew. He's, oh. he's uh, rushing him. <sighs> he re- seems really mad that you shot him with that arrow, and the arrow seemed to do extra damage to him. Right, so, um, yeah. I was just debating with my kid here about do I heal or do I attack? Because I oh, can do I a heal. Um, but I'm not sure how how much how injured Ralph is, but he got out of the way of things, so I, I thought oh, that was Oh, well, good. I guess, yeah, first of all, I guess before you start, we need to, if you're are you struggling to stay, you, right? Are, are you staying up on the stands, or are you going to just jump down? Um... No, nah, I was intending. I'm gonna stay up if I can. Okay, make a uh, strength saving throw with disadvantage. Mm-mm. Oh. Okay. Two natural twenties. <laughs> uh, uh, I also got a natural twenty. Fuck. But uh, what's so? Wait, wait, wait. My strength is. Where's my strength? Plus six. Yeah. So that's a 26, and they got a 20 even. 
So yeah, you managed. It's really hard this time. They almost knocked you down, but you managed to stay up. <laughs> I yeah, like this. You had guy. pretty good, pretty good luck with that. <laughs> this is a nice okay. guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So you've got your turn now. He, um, you're talking about cure wounds. You would um, have to. You have to be in touching distance to no, heal. No, no, no. Healing route. word, I think it is. Oh, yeah. okay. Healing word does like one d four or something like that. It is one d four plus one. Yeah, it, it's 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 more useful if if somebody's unconscious and you want to bring them back to consciousness. Okay, thank you. Then yeah. I'm just gonna attack. Is is With healing my... word a, is a full action? I think too, right? So you'd lose all your attacks. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, uh, jo- my son again helped me find Slayer's Prey. Um, okay. I don't think as I think I can double that up on to. Um, yeah. So you're gonna yeah. do Hunter's Mark and Slayer's Prey. That would be fantastic. Okay. Well, and and. Uh, so you do Hunter's Mark as a bonus action, and it, you, it it seems like you should have marked him, but it sort of fizzles out. It doesn't work. But the Slayer's Prey will work. Okay. Yeah. Then that's what I'm doing now. Okay. With my acid arrow thing, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Roll to hit. Oh. And um, although I don't want to jump in the stands, can I jump back a little bit? Uh, yeah. I, would I would say go. I can hop, I can jump, froggy jump. Yeah. With my acrobatic skills and powerful jump boots. Yeah, make a um, make a <laughs> dexterity check, because or actually a okay. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're trying to dodge around all these people that are trying to throw you into the. But I'm body. I'm jumping, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thirteen plus eight is twenty-one. Yeah, you managed to uh, you you kind of weaseled out of their grip and and you. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot that they have disadvantage because you have a slippery hide. Sweet. Yeah, I, I haven't been rolling with this advantage for them to throw you down into the uh, the ground. <laughs> okay, but anyway, you made it. Yeah, you're able to jump away. Okay, because yeah, I, I I can use shoot my arrows from like a super far distance, so I don't really want to be next to Terrence. I'm going back in the stands as far as I can go back, which is thirty okay. feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and they, really, you can only get like five feet back in the stand. What? But it's also it's also a couple of feet up. Yeah, I mean if you look at the map there you you're near the top already. Not the top. I'm I'm curling around the stands. Oh, oh I see what you mean. Yeah, you can go thirty feet that way. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get away from Terrence a little bit. I know he's like super mad and probably wanting to yeah, do lots of damage and he ran at me, so he's obviously trying to do something awful. Um, so... That's where I want to go. I so you're leaping sense. into the air and firing two arrows in midair? Uh-huh. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get back to my Okay, so I'm rolling. Alright. Rolling. Okay. Oh. Not well, nineteen. That hits. Twenty-three. Thirteen. 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 Plus. Four. Seventeen. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Oh damn it. No, damage. Seventeen okay. is the damage. Alright, yeah. Um that was for the first arrow? Yeah. Okay. Um and that's doubled to thirty-four. So I'm gonna do it again. It seems like it does extra damage this uh arrow that you shot into him. I'm thrilled. Uh oh. Twelve. 
was mine. Yeah. So you rolled a two? I did. <laughs> okay, that misses. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, That's it. <laughs> Uh, Zoe is next. All right. Um, action, bonus action, and movement. So I think you're. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Question. Um, I was looking at um, the channel Divinity Preserve Life. Uh, it can be used as an mm -hmm. action to restore 45 hit points. Any creatures within 30 feet of you that I choose and divide the hit points among them. Um, yeah. I know Chert of you're just basically got what about half of his his uh points gone is i can't see where's i can't see richard on my map where are you uh richard is is uh like southeast of you like just he's just 10 feet away okay how are you doing on your on your uh on your hit points i'm healthy 100 percent. okay all right then what i will do is I will do a first level um, cure wounds on Churdip Beer since he's right there and it's touch. Cute. So. Oh, great. All right, 14. <laughs> wow. 14 points to Churdip Beer. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I did lose like 20 points uh, a while ago, so it's nice to have 14 back. Thank you very much, Zoe. No problem. Now, um, on bonus actions, um, it says I can use my spiritual weapon again. Is my spiritual yeah. weapon still there? Okay, yeah, let me go there. ahead. All right, I'm going to do that as a bonus action. I don't like Tom. I don't like Clown, so he's got he's got to go. Okay. <laughs> Well, and, and you can—I think you can attack him with advantage because he's grabbed by the earth and grass. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Musette will be next after this turn. All right. So seventeen to hit. So I definitely hit. That hits. Yeah, and you can actually roll twice and see if you get a critical hit. Oh. Okay. Well, let me roll, roll a second time then. No, I did not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you hit. All right. So for damage. I only did five. Five? Okay. He says, damn it, Terry. I'm guessing you're staying where you are. Yeah, I'm just going to stay where I am because everybody's uh, congregating around us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Musette's turn. Oh. Okay. Then Tom well, will be next, and then Jonathan. Nobody's bothering me yet, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, are you... You jump down from the stands. I forget where you're nope. at. Oh, you're. No, I scooched oh, over. Oh yeah, no, they, yeah, they, they, uh, they, they do crowd up, up to you, and uh, and they try to push you down into this, uh, into the arena. So make a strength saving throw with disadvantage. Okay, strength. Oh man. Okay, disadvantage. First one is sixteen. Second one yeah. is fifteen. So fifteen. You you, you you beat you beat them. They got a twelve. Okay. So you managed to kind of wriggle out of that, and they didn't push you down into the into the arena. Okay. So it says that my misty step is a bonus action. Can I still just like use it right now? Yeah, you can use those in any order. Okay. So I'm going to misty step up on top of this little the walk. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you, you you can barely make it. That's like that was probably like twenty feet above you and five to the right. So yeah. It says it's thirty feet. My uh, misty step. Yeah, yeah. So I think you. It's I know it's kind of close. close. But you, yeah, okay. but you made it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um. So and then after that, where's Ralph? I'm gonna turn around and <laughs> oh, cast uh, cast healing word. For Ralph, so he regain he regains four d four plus three hit points. Oh wow! So you did it at a higher level. Yeah. Okay. So, so but yeah, go ahead and roll the roll the healing on that for Ralph. Okay. Ralph gets back fifteen. Oh, awesome! Yay, Ralph! Hell yeah! And, he, and he's less. not in the not in the kill box anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Tom is going to make a strength saving throw to try to get out of the earth and grasp again. He got a five, so he's still stuck in there. 
and he's going to wildly uh, swing at, at uh, Zoe again with disadvantage. That's uh, 19 to hit for one of them. Okay, so that hits. He does 7 damage. And then he's going to do one more attack against you at disadvantage. Natural 1. He's pull up the chart wow. and see what happens to him. Three. So he got a 33 on the chart, which is... He dropped his weapon on the ground. And it's 10 no. feet away from him. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, that's his turn. And next is Jonathan. What's Jonathan going to do? Is Jonathan still invisible? Yeah. Okay. Or what, is he, Rob? He has to drop it to cast other spells because it's concentration. So then he doesn't really have okay. anything else that he can cast. Oh, okay. And synaptic so. static was concentration, right? That was no, that was an action, but it was a level five spell. I can't do it again. But I, but it's it's staying on uh, on Ralph. Yeah, for one minute, or until he breaks free. Okay, but it's not a concentration spell during that time. No, that's only if he failed the saving throw. Okay. Well, and also he would have had to make a Constitution saving throw when he first got shot by that arrow. You know, to to break his yeah, to, to drop he passed the... it. Oh, okay. All right, so what's he gonna do? Okay, he's gonna cast um, snap, uh, not that one. Mind Sliver. Okay. On whom? On Ralph. Okay. Oh my God. So you need to make an intelligent saving throw? Okay. Ralph's getting his ass kicked, guys. What do I need to, for this saving throw? 17. Fucker. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Seventeen. All right. So Crazy. does that not that wouldn't do anything then, right, Rob? Because I think that's a is that a cantrip? Uh, yeah, no, no damage. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, and then the wolf is going to take fire damage first. What's the saving throw right. for that? Oh, it's a dexterity twelve. It's not a very challenging one because it was coming up at you. Dexterity is only plus two. Wow, five. Okay, yeah, so he takes... Uh, huh? Four damage. He takes four Good. four fire damage, the hound. Oh. He's very hurt. Okay. And then and... he's going to Go charge Ralph. And Ralph has the cloak is working right now still, I think, right? Yeah. So yeah, so he attacks at disadvantage. Oh, it's a displacement, yes. <laughs> yeah, you haven't you haven't taken any physical attack damage yet this round. Like you've taken other kinds of damage, but not not like somebody attacking you with a sword. And stuff. Seven. Seven uh, to hit. To hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he no, missed. He missed. He, missed. He, he hasn't. He's never hit Ralph at all yet, has he? The Hound. No. I think. I think it's all been the Sabaticus. Am I able to do a reaction if he misses? No, I you have, you have to take damage. Well, it, it depends on what reaction you're talking about, but but I think that yeah, for for the Hellish Rebuke, it has to be if you take damage. No, yeah, okay, yeah, but I'm talking about like an opportunity attack, like a melee attack. Uh, that opportunity right. attack of opportunity is when they move out of your range. I think oh, is wait, it no, also if they move, is it when they move into his range too? It's when they move out of your range. I was just reading it from my character too. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but if he tried to run away from you, you could do it. Which he can't do. Part of the spell says he has to constantly chase him and try to attack him. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I thought I was able to do hungry jaws. Never as a reaction. Hungry, but never hungry mind. hippos. <laughs> hungry jaws. <laughs> what, was that hungry eyes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was hungry, hungry hippos. Yeah. <laughs> 
hurt him. Bonus action. Okay. Sorry. All right. Anyway, he missed me, right? Yeah, he did. Okay. And that's the end of uh, Jonathan's turn, right? Anything else that he can do? Is he going to move or anything? Uh, Looks like he's, he's just circling up in the air over the center ring. And how many feet up is he? How tall is the tent? Uh, 20 feet. He's going to stay pretty close to the top because of the fire. Okay. And the fire is like 8 feet high. So he'll be like All right. 15. And it's Terrence's turn. And he is super mad. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I think he can go forty. Yeah. Twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Okay, that's making me very uncomfortable. Yeah. He's in your space. He's in my bubble. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he is going to cast Dominate Person on you. So make um, make a wisdom saving throw. So not only is he inside your bubble, he's kind of bullying you. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the, so the saving throw section, not the ability check section. About so, that makes it 10. 10? Yeah, okay, you've been dominated. Oof. I was trying to run away. Yeah. <laughs> he says, Kill all your allies. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's time to reach for a moment of mindfulness. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, uh, next up is uh, Mary's swords. So we've got three of them attacking Richard and three of them attacking uh, Churdovir. Yikes. Plus three to hit. Okay, so we've got a 15 and a 9 and a 21 to attack Richard. Uh, armor class 18, so one of them hits me. Okay. Okay, you take eight damage from one of them. Kind of nicks you. And then Damage. for Chertovir. Wow. Uh, geez, another natural one. And an eight. And a 22. So probably only the 22 would hit out of that. Right? So we'll do that first. So you take uh, six damage from one of the swords. Me? Uh, True to weird does, yeah. Six damage, okay. And then we'll deal with the one that's uh, critical failure. Remember when we had a bunch of skeletons getting critical failures and they kept hitting each other and killing each other? <laughs> yeah. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> it says you and your allies all suffer disadvantage for your next attack. That's talking about the, the, um, the swords and stuff. So I would say it's really only its allies are Mary. So Mary has disadvantage on her next attack. And the swords do. So we'll have to remember that. Okay, so that's the swords turn. The uh, the golem is gonna make two slam attacks against Churdovia. So the first one, he puts his two fists together and wham! Uh, so it's 13 plus 8. 21 to hit. Uh, that hits. And 14 damage for uh, the first one. Okay. And then the second slam attack. Oh. 12 to hit. So the second slam, then you kind of duck out of the way and it whoa, kind of overextends okay. and swings towards okay. the ground. All right, I'm down to 30 points. And it is Richard's turn. Okay, so she just sliced me with that uh, little sword and I break out my melee, <laughs> or my uh, <clears throat> my short sword and uh, my attacker with it. 
with one hand and hit her with a 16. Okay. Uh, oh, the, um, yeah, Mary Slaughter. Mary Slaughter, yeah. Yeah, so I think that hits. Yeah, it does. Okay, what's and the damage? The damage is seven. Okay. And you've and got two I attacks. Crush down with my luck blade and only swing with an 11. 11 to hit? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that barely missed. Ah! Okay, I and she is like class, just barely though. hanging on by a little wispy thread. Mm, I say something witty to her. <laughs> okay. That's my turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, make a charisma check to see how witty your, your thing is that you say. All right. <laughs> I'm hearing. Do you get my point? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was critical fail. <laughs> I got Stick 13. Around. 13. All right, yeah. Um, so she just kind of cringes at you. I'm like, take that. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so the Sabaticus. That cringe should uh, give out damage points. So, Rob, what it is this nine, this nine thing on the Sabaticus? Or this little skull or whatever? Is that... I forget what that is. Is that he's afraid? Yeah, it's, it's it's fear. Fear of Mary Slaughter. Yeah. Okay. All right. He can go 30 feet. 5, 10... 15, 20, 25. Yeah, he's going to go right up to Ralph. Okay, so he's going to make some attacks against Ralph. So first he's going to bite 13. Oh, and that would have been with disadvantage. So, he, yeah, he missed his bite. And then two claw attacks with disadvantage. Six and a natural 20. So he missed again. He, and he missed his chance to do a critical hit. Thank and... Fuck five and a 19. So he missed all three of his attacks because of your cloak. Thank you. Yeah, he might have he might have killed you. He would. If, if it weren't for your cloak. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Churdovir is next. Um, I pull out my Arethamic Silken Sword. All right. And I prepare to attack uh, the Golem. Okay. So that's plus nine to hit. Let's see what I can do. And get. you can do that booming blade thing on it too, right? I could if I hadn't rolled a ten. Oh, so I see. Ten, ten to hit. Ten total to hit? Yeah, yeah ten, one plus nine. Ugh. But you've got two attacks per action. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I guess I'll, I'll try to attack with my sword again. Okay. Okay, let's roll to hit. Come on, give me 19 to hit. That definitely hits. Okay. Are you going to so, add the booming blade onto it? Uh, is that a cantrip? I can't remember. I think it's... Let me check. A... Uh, booming blade is a cantrip. I can okay. uh, do it at will. So... Yeah. yeah. I guess I'll do that. So I will cast booming blade. Wait, I didn't see how many points I hit of damage, right? But it depends on the booming blade. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so, so that adds more to the damage. Yeah, so I brandish the weapon, make a melee attack. On a hit, the target suffers the weapon's attack normal effects and then becomes sheathed in booming energy until yeah. the start of my next turn. If the target tries to move five feet or more before then, the target takes 1d8 thunder damage and the spell ends. So, okay, now they're sheathed in booming energy. And I'm okay. going to roll for damage with my sword, right? So one. So he doesn't take extra damage from the spell right away, only if he tries to move? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, he suffers the weapon attacks, normal effects, and then becomes sheathed in that booming energy. Okay. So he can't move. So I'm going to okay. roll 1d4 plus 4. That's uh, 2 plus 4, 6. 6 damage. <laughs> And it is Mary Slaughter's turn. Um, everybody make a constitution saving throw, everyone that's within 30 feet of her. Which We're is basically everybody on the left side of the screen. Everybody's on the left, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. So I get a 4 plus 2, 6. Okay. I, also, I see. I also it, got it a 6. Like, 
it looks like Richard passed and everybody else on that side of the screen failed. So she does a wail and um, and she's just ah! and everybody that failed that Richard passed, but the everyone else that failed is gonna take psychic damage. Uh ten ten psychic damage. Okay, so that's ten damage. Yeah. And that's her turn. And next is Ralph. What's Ralph going to do? Big guy being on me messed up my plans. This uh, Sabbaticus. Yeah. So, uh, I want to hit the Sabbaticus with uh, my tentacle whip. Uh, damage uh, 1d4 plus 4 and then 1d6 psychic. Okay. Uh, roll the hit. Then it's a d6. 19. I rolled a 19. And then roll a d6 to subtract off of that. Actually, he should make his intelligence saving throw first. So that would be an 8 if I use it, so... You're rolling a 20-sided die? Yeah. Yeah, he's just getting really terrible rolls today. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's really yeah. bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And and I think that the, the um, Sabaticus was supposed to roll to get out of the synaptic static last time, and he didn't. Right, so that's yeah. intelligence saving throw 18. 17. 17. Eight I eight rolled eight. a 17 last time though, but it's every turn. Ten. Wait, did you roll a 17 last time? I did. Then you're free. It I doesn't just... hit you at all anymore. Oh, okay, yeah, I rolled a 17 last time, and okay. as you said 17, I was like, oh, all wow. Right. I so you hit him with your whip. Uh, go ahead and do the damage. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's eleven damage, two psychic damage. So thirteen. Yeah, uh, you gain a two, a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made within with this magic whip, but attack okay. rolls made against uh, aberrations with this weapon have disadvantage. The creature hit by this weapon takes an extra one d six psychic damage. When you roll a 20 on the D20 for an attack roll with this weapon, the target is stunned until the end of its okay. next turn. Yeah, but you didn't get a critical hit, so it didn't it didn't stun him, but it did a bunch of damage. Okay, cool. He, he's that makes me happy. Up. What? All right. He's pretty looking pretty beat up. Bonus action, I can make a bite attack. If it hits, you gain two temporary hit points. I want to use Hungry Jaws on him. Okay. Roll uh, to hit. I did not add the plus five, so that okay, makes it yeah, 20. Okay, yeah, so that, that makes it 20, yeah. So, yeah, you hit. Roll your your Hungry Jaws damage. You said you take a bite out of me, I'll take a bite out of you. Uh, in belly, uh 1d6 plus two. Yeah, and if you, and uh, you'll you'll get two points of healing back, because your constitution bonus is plus two. <laughs> so, that's uh, equal to eight. Eight damage. All right. Eight damage, and then I add two for healing. Yeah. Wait. Yes, exactly. Renfrew is going to be next. Okay. Well, what's the sabbaticus at right now? Or do wait, wait. We're not supposed to know that. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, well, he's 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 looking really really hurt from where he started. Yeah, he's he's all beat up. <clears throat> he's been burned and and da and cloud of daggers and and. Uh, synaptic static and so he's got taken all kinds of damage he's kind of like you no <laughs> he's dying too all right are you gonna move or you are you gonna move or stay where you're at me yeah so you view i think you've used your action right but not your bonus oh no you did i did uh, yeah i just action. used my bonus action which was the hungry jaws to, to yeah okay it's Renfrew's turn. Okay, I'm trying to do some creative thinking. Um, yeah, kill all your allies. And um, didn't you mention earlier that Terrence was seen as my ally a while back in this game today? He used and to I be have on not your... officially been attacked by him yet. He, he used to be. He used to be on your uh, squad seventy-eight. So, he didn't attack me also yet in this game, therefore can he be considered my ally? 
Yes. He didn't say current ally. He just said attack oh. leader allies. <laughs> You're not I supposed would to like be to fighting against him. me. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Thank you. I mean, because uh. they used to work together, right? <laughs> yes. Dude, yeah. I think that that is... Uh. the best buddies for a while. Right. It's just been like two days since they quit uh, being friends. Yeah. No, no, this is... Um, this was just uh, poor wording on my part. Okay. They're just uh, <laughs> Go ahead. frenemies. You know? Yeah. Enemies All right. with benefits. <laughs> so I still believe my best attack is the arrow. Yeah. You know, for, um, for whatever reason, that seems to be hurting him a lot. I'm loving that. Um, and I'm assuming he's... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. He's not expecting me to attack him, though. But just saying. Mm-hmm. So I will attack. Okay. Uh, roll the hit. 19. Uh, yeah, 19 hits. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to throw, um, what was it? The Slayer's Prey. And the Slayer's acid Prey, acid damage. And can I put Hunter's Mark back on? Uh, you, you can try it, but you know it didn't work last time. Okay, okay, never mind then. Should have said kill squad 77. 13. If he was thinking, he would have said that. 15. I'm going to blame Terrence for that. So the first attack does 18 damage. Okay. Right. Uh, and then that's times two. So that's uh, oh, right. 36. And then you can double it. So he, he, with that weapon, he only gets the acid damage on the first attack. So the second one doesn't have that. But I have air acid arrow tipped weapons. Oh, the acid arrows that you're using right. up? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, you can use those. So I can use more. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna do your second attack? I am. So the uh, first one sinks into him and he, he's got this look of horror on his face because he, he's realizing his mistake and uh, yeah. he, he, he's afraid that he's not gonna be able to get out of this now. Sweet. Um, so the second attack is uh, to hit would be 21. Yes. 20 damage. He's dead. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you killed parents. Yeah. You so he, uh, he, he enjoys. He's, he's, got two arrows sunk into him and he, he uh, hits the ground and you see his body sort of morph and change and then it looks like what Richard saw. It looks like a, a tiger man with backwards hands and uh, and it's lying on the ground there for, for uh, a little while before it starts to kind of disintegrate and sink into the ground. That was poetic as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! I can't that believe that. I, he should have said. 9, he should have said, "Kill, kill Squad 77." Hey, <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I had this uh, whole you... round of discussion yeah. time to try to weasel <laughs> out of it. Yeah, Self-home. you you have uh, bonus actions and movement now. Oh, bonus. Oh, and action. also. Uh, also, the crowd is going to try to try to throw Push you down. Again? Into the, yeah. Wait, but it has disadvantage because of the slippery skin. Yeah, and but they have advantage because it's a whole group of people, so it it, it, it equals out in any way. They just got a six. You have to beat a six. Oh, I'm actually up in trouble. Eight. Strength saving. Throw. I rolled eighteen. <laughs> eighteen okay, plus yeah. whatever strength. Plus eighteen plus six. Yeah, I think. That's my okay. Yeah, you made it. Why do you have plus six for a strength saving? Strength saving? I yeah, his know. his strength isn't that high. It's well, plus two for normal strength. Normal strength, but saving throws it says plus six on my D and D. Okay, I'm sure there's a reason for it then. Okay, um, uh, yeah. So you have movement, and you have bonus action. Are you gonna do anything else? I'll just move a little bit just to the end of the bleachers just to be a little more in there. 
It has a proficiency be... bonus on it. Something like that, I oh. guess. Nothing significant. Okay. Um, Four plus two. Yeah. I think I'm done. Okay. All right, then. I'm pretty yeah, happy. He's... I'm satisfied. He's dead. You see a big stack of your arrows on the ground where he uh, disappeared. Okay. I'll collect those later when we're done. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Zoe's turn. All right, I am going to reach inside my coat and pull out the Wand of the War Mage, which mm -hmm. adds plus three to any of my attack spells. All right. And I am going to do uh, da, 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 Guiding Bolts, level one okay. on Gollum. And I think... I got 19, so that definitely hits, right? Okay. And and what what spell are you doing? Is this Guiding, guiding Bolt? bolt? level against, one first level against against Tom Gollum or Gollum. Oh, okay yeah no because right. no because I'm going to use that uh that bonus action on Tom oh okay work smarter not harder <laughs> yeah all right so yeah that hits okay and for damage 11 okay he takes 11 damage okay and then and, from he's, my... he, and he's glowing so the next attack against him will have advantage or all of the okay. next round yeah. Okay, and then for my bonus action, doing that um, that uh, spiritual weapon on Tom. Yeah. So let me. Okay, you see. can roll with advantage because he's still grabbed by the earthen grasp. Oh, I definitely hit twenty-two. <laughs> oh yeah, was that a that wasn't a natural twenty? Okay, yes, you hit him. Roll roll your damage. Five. Okay. Five damage against. Yep, got it. Okay. Yeah, so he tries to tries to dodge, but he can't because he's stuck in that hand, and it slashes at his face again. All right, and next is Musette's turn. Okay, Musette I have no idea. Has been unscathed. Uh -huh. Sorry, I have no idea if this plan works at all. Um, so do I just move forward with this weird plan that I have in my head or do I like, do you want me to run it by you? Uh, oh yeah, well, what did you want to do? Uh, I was thinking of minor <clears throat> illusioning, very loud sound so everyone is distracted and then announcing that Terrence is dead because I don't okay. know if that would stop the, yeah. Okay, so yes, do that. Okay, okay yeah, go so, ahead. Um, we're gonna minor illusion um, let's do trumpets. Let's do like really okay. good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Trumpets. Um, I think that would get everyone to stop fighting. Yeah. And then, um, and I'm up, you know, I'm up. Yeah. Elevated. So, uh, will my voice carry all the way through the stadium, even though there's fire and stuff? Didn't that be the loud noise? Yeah. You'll, you'll want to make a persuasion check. Okay. So persuasion. Okay, I got twenty-three. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so you you managed to yeah you managed to cut through all the noise and you're able to yell to the crowd. So uh, what what do you yell? So I'm gonna yell. Um, Terrence, Terrence is, dead. is dead. Why are we, Why fighting? Are we fighting? Okay. And uh, Tom, uh, Tom Requiem looks up and says, and, uh, and he says, wait, Terrence is dead? And uh, he says, he yells, everyone stop. Who's and this? Uh, uh, Tom Requiem, he's the one okay. that's, that's grabbed by the, the, the hand. Yeah, he's the clown. And, and uh, next is Mary, Mary Slaughter. And she, um, she makes all of her swords kind of float up in the air and they come back to around here her and they circle around her and she she puts her hands up and she starts backing away so you can do an attack of opportunity if you want or you can just let her go um i want to hit her i don't know where she where where am i okay. where is she why don't they were even close why do you hate women richard Hey, all I'm yeah. saying is she paper cut me with that sword. 
I'm not letting her get away Me unscathed. Uh, okay, so you're going to do an attack of opportunity? Yes, please. Okay, roll to hit. 27. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> okay. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> roll your damage. <laughs> 12. Go get her, Smitty. Yeah. Oof. She had uh, she had two points, so wow, <laughs> she killed her. Yeah. So I look at yeah. her and I say, "How does your garden grow now?" <laughs> she looks yeah, at you confused, and then and and she, when you hit her, she kind of disintegrates, and all the swords just kind of clatter down onto the ground. <laughs> and I take my other sword, and I'm like, and I just put it back in my belt. <laughs> and Tom, when he sees that, he says, "Hey, wait a minute!" And he says, uh, "Elijah, kill them." Okay. Uh, and, and next up is Jonathan. Jonathan's gonna cast darkness and leave. Okay. So he flies out of the out of the tent. Yeah. Is he going through the front door or trying to like cut a hole through the roof? Uh, he'll try to just go out the front door. Okay. Yeah, and that's easy enough to do. I mean, he's got mage hands and stuff. He can he can get out through the door. All right, so Jonathan is gone. Terrence is dead. Flying swords are dead. Play Golem is going to attack Chertovir again. Because that's what uh, his master told him to do. Right. Well, then this spell's going to end. A slam attack. Uh, that's 11 to hit, so the first one misses. And a natural one for the second one. Jeez. Okay. Did that dog next to Sabaticus die? Uh, when Jonathan left, it disappeared. Oh. Okay. All right, Richard, what are you going to do? I'm going to just start hacking and slashing at Elijah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's made of ash, so I feel pretty confident. So I That's swing around uh, with Roll Cassius's hit. old sword. 24 to hit. That hits. With 11 damage. Okay. I'm going to swing it again. For 27 to hit. That hits. 11 damage. Hey, that was okay. exactly yeah. the same both times. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, any bonus actions or anything else you want to do? I'm just going to... Uh... No, actually, no, I'm good where I'm at. I need to stay on my ground. Yeah, you're, you're, you're chopping away at him, uh, making some progress, but he's a huge thing and it's going to take a while. Okay, the sabbaticus. Uh, knowing everything that's going on is going to turn around and go actually no he's not going that way because he's kind of pinned in by the fire if he goes that way he's going to go this way up here and he can go 30 feet oops but uh, he's going to double move didn't Ralph get an attack of opportunity? Yes. On the Sabaticus? Yeah, you can hit him on his with your whip if you want to. And uh yeah, I want to hit him with my whip. Or yeah, maybe... that'll use up your reaction for this turn. I'm gonna slap <clears throat> that bitch with my tentacle whip. Roll to hit. Yeah, I'm gonna roll to hit. Yeah. Ten. Ten to total? I rolled a ten. Plus seven. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, that hits. Yeah. Eight. Okay. Takes eight damage. That's pretty good. And he used his whole turn to get to where he's at there. Oh, is Sabbatical and... dead? No, he's not dead. Is... Oh, where'd nope. he go? He'll... He's uh, up by the cannon. Oh. Now it's Chertovir's turn. All right. You... So... The swords, the swords are gone, but the golem is still there, and Tom yes. is still there. 
Yeah, so I am going to cast Toll the Dead at uh, the Golem. So it's cantrip. Okay. Necromantic yeah. cantrip. It says, I point at the one creature I see within range, and the sound of a dolorous bell fills the air around it for a moment. Dong! Dong. So the okay. Golem has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 necrotic damage. If the target is already missing any of its hit points, it instead does 1d12 necrotic damage. Oh, okay. Yes. So what's the what's the saving throw we have to do? Uh, wisdom saving throw, 15. Okay. Oh, that's not good. He, okay. he got a 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so he takes a d12. Go ahead and roll a d12 damage. He's hurt, so... Okay, so it says here the spell's damage increases by one die when you reach fifth level. I'm actually level nine. Nine, yeah. So do T8, it's... Oh, uh, 2D8 or 2D12. 11th so level, it's two... 3D... Yeah, so it's 2D12. Yeah, so it's 2D12. Wow. Okay, so that's two plus two, four. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ryan. So oh, you, whoa, whoa, you whoa, see sorry. some... Uh, you, you, you see some, some ash just kind of rain down off of it. Ugh. Okay, Rob. Uh, cannon. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were going to kind of do that as a action at the top of each round, and I've been looking, but the, this guy has not really had anybody to eat. It maybe hit Ralph. And now, and now the sabbaticus is in its way, so... Yeah. So it, he's, gonna, he's not going to do anything this time. Uh, so we are at the top of the next round, and if you guys are good, we'll take a quick break. Sure. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Exordorex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Don't have time to read? Are you a filmmaker with aspirations of making the next big summer blockbuster, but are too bogged down with your own self-imposed workload of movie making and don't know what to do? Well, the solution is here. Make your own damn movie, the audiobook. Written by legendary filmmaker and creator of The Toxic Avenger. That's me, Lloyd Kaufman. 
with special guest Adam Jakey and Trent Hager. Read by me, Catalina Querida. Get the inside scoop on the trauma process, raising money, 500 useless screenwriting books boiled down to one short chapter, meeting your future victims, covering your ass, location shooting, stunts, and effects, and fixing all your problems in post-production. Listen as traumorific filmmakers read out loud to you all 329 pages of Lloyd's personal knowledge and experience. Start streaming your chapters today on Trauma Now! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Chena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.teepublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. And we're back. And it's top of the first round. And uh Ralph, you're up. Yeah, I'm up. Arr. Yeah, you're a... really loud. Okay. <laughs> Ralph's angry because Sabaticus yeah. ran away from me. <clears throat> and I'm like, hey yeah. buddy. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Hey buddy. I'm going to hit you with my Eldridge Blast Beams. Okay. You got two of those, right? That's right, baby. Yeah. And, hey, Rob, is the would this synaptic static still be on, in effect on them if Jonathan is gone? I'm, I'm, I've beaten the synapse to static. Yeah, oh, you did, yeah. right. But, <laughs> but it, would it still be on Sabaticus? I mean, uh, yeah, I guess. Because it's just an effect, like of his thoughts being muddled. Oh, until he I see. Snaps out of it. Uh, yeah, after ten rounds, we're on round five right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, Chertovir. So every time you got hurt, there was supposed yes. to be a Constitution saving throw to maintain your your uh, to maintain your Earth and Grasp spell because oh. it's a concentration spell. So okay. since I forgot about it the other times you got hurt, we'll just do one right now. Okay. So, so you want me to do a, a wisdom? What? <clears throat> uh, no, constitution saving throw. Okay, let's do a constitution saving throw, and I've got yeah. 16 plus 2, 18. 18? Okay, yeah, you passed. No it's pick? 10 or half the damage that you took at win one turn, whichever is, it, is higher, is how that now? works. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I want to get rid of this. No, you're uh, not on. I'm oh. sorry. It's Ralph's turn, but I wanted to do that before we started. Thank you. So Thank go you. ahead, Ralph. <clears throat> Elder's Blast, go! Okay, roll to hit for each each one. Okay, so that's, uh, that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 for my first beam. That hits. And then 21 for my second beam. Also hits, okay. which is 1d10 plus 3 for each beam, right? Yep. So that's 13 on my first beam. Yeah. Okay. Ouch. 7 on my second beam. It is in really, really bad shape. but it's Why won't you die? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in its uh, Renfro's turn. Okay. Um, and Zoe will be next after Renfrew. So there's one, two, three. 
major players left, I guess. Okay. Um, I kind of just want to yell, hey, can we all stop? <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, in lieu of that, I can just go ahead and finish I think off. you you would have a tougher time from your vantage point, you know, doing that compared to, you know, what uh, Musette did. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and I guess I'll move a little closer, but I'll get rid of this okay. if I can. Okay. Something like that, I guess. And then I'll roll to hit that thing. Okay. <laughs> Not a natural 20. I love this die. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ro roll your damage and double it. Yeah. Because it's a critical hit. Who's she throwing it at? Uh, the Sabaticus. Okay. Actually, you don't need to bother to roll it. No? Um, okay. We're yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you you fire it straight into its head, and the Sabaticus just kind of plumps down. Okay. There's, it's on the other side now. Men, can I attack another foe? Yes. <laughs> okay. We have Tom and... The, the clay golem, yeah, golem. The, the yeah, the golem Elijah. All right, and Tom still has the, the hand thing or whatever on it. Yes. Oh, Sabaticus is dead. Yeah, yeah, Sabaticus is dead. And um, can he I see three hit points Tom left? Pretty clearly from where I'm at, or not? Uh, the fire is eight feet high, so I think you'd you'd, you'd really need to be able to get around it just to see. Can I just Unless jump you, you up in the air? Jump, yeah, you could jump up in the air and do it. Okay. I'll just do that. Okay. Do you still have the boots of striding and springing? I sure do. Yeah, you can jump 30 feet up in the air then. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm jumping and <clears throat> doing a arrow attack on Tom. Okay. I rolled Poor old Tom. Oh, I don't, so I got 20, uh, not a natural 20. Okay. You're actually rolling with advantage because he's restrained. I mean, not that it matters, but... No, I like what I rolled. Okay. okay. 5 plus 6 is 11. Oh. Do I get to move stuff like Slayer's Prey and all that? Uh, You can, yeah. I think... Do we can read what it says? Does it say as an action or as it a bonus action? Layers prey is a bonus action. Yeah, so bonus action, you can move that on there. I'll do that then. Off of the dead guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Shit, Joel, you're distracting me. <laughs> he's he's been <laughs> help. <laughs> Eleven, twelve, and then um. Can I also throw Hunter's Mark on there for good measure? No, that would be two bonus actions. Is it a bonus action? Or I thought it was a spell thingy, but... I don't yeah, know. it's a spell that takes a bonus action to cast. Or Fair to enough. move. I, got a, yeah. I think that means that I got... What's your damage? Okay, yeah, he's got an arrow that sunk right in, in between his shoulder and his head. And he's like, ah, jeez! Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Zoe's next. I think and then I'm, Musette. I think I'm... Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm not hearing myself very well. Okay, I'm just going to do the exact same thing as I did last time and do the Guiding Bolt on the Golem. Okay, and oh, and you have advantage for attacking him. Yeah. You can roll twice and take the high... Because he's glowing from your last Guiding Bolt. Right. Uh, 28 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that hits. I think I hit. Okay, yeah. and for damage, 15. Okay. And, of course, Tom gets his little... Oh, the, um, yeah, the, okay. Yeah, roll the hit with that. Right here. 22. That hits. And damage, 7. Ooh, yeah, okay. He's not dead, but he's also very, very close. I don't really need to move, so I'm just that, that's it for me. Okay. All right. Uh, next is Musette. Okay, cool. I am going to 
jump down from where I am. Okay, um, that's you're like twenty feet up. Okay, well, can then can I jump? Uh, is it easier for me to jump over into the stands? Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Okay, jumping over into the stands, but I'm going over here. Um, and then I guess I can move probably like three more spaces or two, no, one more space, correct? No, well, you, I'd say that jump probably used half your movement and then you can, okay. so you still have your other four spaces. 15 feet or something you like that. You could arc the tight three rope spaces. too. Okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I fall on the fire, but <laughs> yeah. So I am going to, yeah, um, yeah. Did someone say wall of fire? Because that's what I was going to do. Oh, I was saying if you walked on the tightrope, you might fall in the fire. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I don't that, think I would have survived walking on the tightrope because then he would have made me do some sort of, uh, I don't know, what. So that. Athletics the, or acrobatics. Acrobatics. That wall of fire is about eight feet high. Mm -hmm. So you could see your enemies while you were up there, but you probably can't see them when you're down on the ground. Oh. So if you wanted to cast that first before you got down, you could do that. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if I was too far away in order to Oh, get I see. Both What's I King what's the Pat range on that? And Elijah. It's a hundred and twenty Oh yeah, you got plenty of space even up there. Oh I did? Well, shoot. We're gonna, can I rewind? Rewind? Yeah, yeah, rewind. you can rewind. Rewind, okay. So then I will pass <clears throat> from up there. Wall of fire. Okay. Um, and then it says you can make the wall up to 60 feet long, 20 feet high, one foot thick. Um, so all I wanna do is place it on Elijah. And it goes diagonal across to also hitting the kitty cat or whatever okay. that is. What is that? A clown? The clown? Yeah, Tom. Tom. I don't know why I couldn't. This guy's running Tom's away. Clown. He's pinning over here. Okay. Oh, he didn't have a name tag, so I didn't know if he was someone. Because I was. Yeah, they, they, they're just like they're just like animal handlers. They, I mean, they they just oh. like open the cages and stuff. Well, I don't want to bother workers. They're just working. They okay. got bills to pay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Although you're about to make them unemployed. Well, the, it's okay though. They'll still be alive. They can go get another job. They'll be fine. That's right. Yep. Okay. Um. So we're gonna put it on. Yeah, the wall against. Uh, or I. Okay. Directly on top of Elijah and uh, diagonal through to Tom. Hopefully, okay. you know, all of my friends will know to not step into that. Okay. And then it is, come on. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna cast it at fourth level just to get it done. Okay. It didn't take the slot. <clears throat> I think it automatically hits Tom because he can't dodge out of the way. I think he can't even do. Right. Oh yeah, there it is, yeah. Yeah. So it's a 5d8 fire damage, it looks like. Oh. Okay, and oh. what's the um, what's the saving throw on that? Dexterity fifteen. Okay. And I didn't realize that I clicked the button, so I guess I'll just go with this button because it did the math for me. Uh, it was twenty nine. Oh, okay. Oh okay. Or so I get a fine. <clears throat> Is it half damage if they pass the saving throw? Uh, let me find out. And you said dexterity fifteen. Yeah, dexterity oh. fifteen. He got a 14, or okay. 12, I mean. He's got minus one dexterity. So yeah, they, he takes full, they both take full damage. Okay, then it's 29 is what I, what I Ooh, Oh, geez. Okay, Tom is dead. Yay. Where is Tom? There take he is. that, Bozo. Yeah. You said 29 damage? 29. Yeah, Tom had two hit points left, so he's gone. And Elijah is not down. But it's got, uh, it's just kind of surrounded by enemies and it's on fire. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that your turn or are you staying where you're at? 
Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stay where okay. I'm at. That's safe. Thank you. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. Dead, gone. Dead, 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 dead. I'm going through the rest of the enemies here. Now it's the golem's turn. Well, the person who just said on... He has no idea who just said it on fire. So he's not going to go after Musette. So he's going to take it out on me, huh? Uh, well, I think... I think he... No, because... I mean, I think he would want to take it out on you. But a jump on the rope and climb. Five, ten, fifteen. 15. He wants to get out of the fire and then attack whoever he can, which is Richard. I jump. Okay. So he's going to do two slam attacks yeah. against Richard. So mm. two slam attacks. Oh, 10 to hit. That's a miss. And 20, uh, 26 to hit. So that one hits. Yes, that hits. 16 damage to Richard. Wow. Jeez. Jeez. Richard's just like. Uh, and now it's Richard's turn. Uh, <laughs> uh okay. So Richard uh, turns to face Elijah. Yeah. And he repeats uh, what he's been doing this whole time. Okay. Packing him with his sword. Uh, 20 to hit. Not natural. Okay. That hits. You need a 12. I got a 13. Or 14, sorry. Oh, oh so the third. Huh. Yeah, 14 to hit. So you, you missed on the second one. No, that was my damage was 13. Oh, oh, okay. Bet. All right, well, I'm going to slash down oh. on him again. This is the last guy. 27 to hit. That totally that. hits. And eight damage. All right. It is not dead. That is not dead, which can eternal lie. All right. Okay. Cthulhu. Yeah, so... Uh, it is now Chernovir's turn. Let's go ahead and, uh, move. I'm going to move over here, right next to Elijah. Yeah. I, I am going to, let me see, if I don't want to hit Richard with oh, this. Oh, you see. know what? You, you have an opportunity attack if you wanted to, when it, uh, uh ran out of your face. That's... It's okay. I'm going to do okay. I'm going to do magic missile. Okay. I, I hope that doesn't have any splash damage on Richard. Let me see. No, it doesn't. And okay. magic missile automatically hit. You just have to roll damage. Okay. So, yeah, magic missile fourth level says 1d4 plus 1. So, let's go yeah, ahead and, and roll that. And and each missile is 1d4 plus 1. I think it starts with 3 and depending on what level you cast it at, there's more missiles. Yeah, so I'm doing this when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each slot level above first. I'm doing it at fourth level, so it's going to be 4, right? Okay. Yeah, it, it, this thing is is reeling. It's hurt really bad. Yeah. So, if so you don't first... want to Okay. The first missile damage, 1d4, is plus 2. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Second, 1d4 is 1. That's 3 points. Okay. Third one gives me 3, so that is now 6 points, right? Yeah. And then the other one is 4. And then plus 1. Yeah. So it's like uh, in the... Uh... Like, yeah, you, you killed it. So it's like in Robotech when all of the missiles come out and home in yeah. on, on the target and, and yeah. blah, 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 yeah, Elijah like, just kind of falls apart into a pile of rubies or whatever they call those things, the monsters. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, uh, that takes care of the golem. Yeah. It's dead. And I don't think you have any more enemies, right? And they're, unless, yeah, unless, unless Richard wants to. The the people in the circus. <laughs> yeah. And the people in the circus are just kind of like, they're kind of edging their way out the door and they're hoping you don't see them. 
I saw that one dude get close to me. I was starting to get worried. Oh yeah, one I of the one of the We can try to wrap that whatever lucky, he has around me and try to. We're yeah. lucky nobody me. fired that cannon at us back there. Yeah. So combat is over. You guys can kind of decide what you want to do at this point. Dude, let's loot the bodies. Okay. Uh, who do you want to look at first? Uh, uh, Mira's back. So, can I say it? Or who was the first one to check the looted bodies? Well, you're, you, you're the one that suggested it. So which yeah. one? Yeah. Where, You've got where's, the... where's Terrence supposed to be at? Is he uh, he's way over. He's he's a lot closer to where Renfrew and Ralph are. He's way over on the other side of the map. Yeah, oh. I want to be able to get my arrows back. Oh, yeah, okay. and and really, that's all you could get over here. You're in yeah, he's not arrows. even a he's not even a body anymore. He's a pile of ash that's mixed in with the uh, in with the sawdust. Hey, can and I so, cap, and, collect some of it? The ash? Yeah, yeah. In, into if you a want receptacle to. of some sort, I want to. Is he yeah. close to Ralph and Renfrew, you said? Yeah. yeah okay. Can I in check the room. ash pile? Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Richard said he was doing. Okay. okay. He wanted to collect some of the ash. Well, he's collecting it. If you look I'm in the ash pile, collecting. all that's there, are, well, there were arrows, but I'm guessing that uh, Renfrew had a chance to get her arrows back before you walked over there. Okay. So, so really all there is the is pile? just ash and, and mixed with sawdust. Okay. No, uh, he doesn't have anything else. Are there still bear traps? Because I kind of want one. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, yeah, you should show me where you guys are walking around. And, and Shurdavir, you walked all the way around to Ralph. Yeah. So uh, to where Ralph is in the ash pile. So let's see. Can you show us where your path that you walked in? Oh, uh, our path. Yeah. So I went more than thirty feet because I didn't know that I had to do that with the thirty feet. So no, you, it's we're not in combat anymore, so you don't you don't have to worry about your yeah. Okay, you're taking so more I, than one turn. Yeah. So I was back here, and I guess I went this way, and this okay. way, and this way, and then I came over here. Okay. So Rob, did he spring any bear traps on his way over there? One. Which one? I went on the bottom oh. half of the circle. Okay. Oh, did I just go over that one? Okay. Yeah. Make a uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity. You have pretty high okay. dexterity, so you might you'll probably be okay. Hey, look at that. Twenty three. Okay. Yeah. You you uh, jumped out of it before. <laughs> I'm like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. It's like, what was that? <clears throat> okay. Ooh. And. Uh, and Richard, do this because you wanted to look through the. You wanted to collect some of the ash. So, which direction did you go? I'm standing right next to him. What? I know oh, the, the ash of the. Oh, oh, you're talking about the gold. The gold. Yeah, Elijah's ashes. Oh, okay. Not the. There's two different guys that are turned into ashes. Oh, my. Okay. Be, my be. Okay. So no, you. Yeah, you can. You yeah, can I'm, definitely I'm rubbing collect through some of his ashes. ashes to see if there's anything solid in there. Not really. I mean, there's chunks of there's chunks of it that are a little more, you know, compressed and solid, but for the most part, it just collapsed. So I grab like some of the chunkier pieces, right? Okay. And I'm imagining I have cargo pockets because of my outfit, and I, I just oh, yeah. kind of stuff one of them. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, and anybody else? Or does uh, Tom have anything freaky in his clown outfit? You just know he does. Uh, make an investigation check. I'd support that, but I'm pretty far away. <laughs> yeah. Eh, eight. Okay, yeah, you, I mean, you don't really find anything other than his, uh, his clown stuff. Squeaky shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Does he yeah. still have his little sword that he was given, or is it still at his feet? Uh, yeah, it's, well, it's about 10 feet away from where he is because he dropped it, but yeah, it's there. Is it, is it a decent sword or is it just a sword sword? It actually looks pretty nice if you want to, you know, Heck you could yeah. take, take some time mm -hmm. later on to, to, it to, um, to identify it. Okay. And by the way, the swords from Mary Slaughter, they disappeared, right? They don't stay on the floor. Uh, they, no, they, well, they did hit the ground. Yeah. Are they still available on the floor? 
Yeah, they're laying on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Do they look like they're interesting in, in terms of weaponry or just random swords? They look like random swords. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. the thing that made them special was her. Manipulating them, floating them around. Yeah. Okay. Can I put my glasses on, my true sight glasses, so I can see these bear traps before I move? Oh, yeah. Uh. Without well, they're they're they're, body, they're not they're not hand really hand. hidden by magic or any kind of disguise. It's just they're just buried in the sawdust. So even that doesn't work. I don't think so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they're they're pretty uh pretty basic. Then I want to move over to where just everybody else something? is. What's that? You just blow the sawdust around or something. Yeah. If you really want to look around. Otherwise, okay. I'd say, let's get out of here. Well, let me you grab that be... broom from that worker over here. Okay. Just yank it out of his hands, and I just start kind of like brooming in front of me while okay. I make my way over to the other guys. And I use it as okay. like a, a prod. There you go. Mine sweeping for sure. Like if it hits one and snaps, I'll I'll, I'll be able to like sidestep okay. it. Okay. So. Uh, I'm just going to move over there, and hopefully that works. Okay, where where the guy is moving with the broom? I don't. Is where Rob is doing now? that? Why did he move way over there? He was standing right next to him. Rob, are you moving the broom guy? Yeah, he was running away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't have my broom. I've got high <laughs> athletics and high intimidation. Yeah. I think that I think that you would probably outrun. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, you're able to, to take his broom away, and he runs away with it. Yay, <laughs> man! All right, so uh, I, I also I grab Zoe. I'm like, come on, let's let's run over here okay. to these guys and use this thing to do that. Okay, uh, yeah, show us the path that you're moving so that we can you know see where the. Oh, oh, I just you know for fun, I didn't know where these are either. I put them all down, so I don't even know where they are. Right oh, you just want me to like? Did you just oh triggered one? Oh. Okay, make a dexterity saving throw just to see if your broom gets caught in it. Bet. Or if you could pull it away in time. What's it say? Fifteen. Oh yeah, you made it. You got to beat a twelve, so you 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 were able to pull it out of there. All right. There's the dead sabbaticus. Are we going to rummage through this sabbaticus at all? Uh, it doesn't have any pockets or anything. It's just a big dead lizard creature. Ugh. Stinks. <laughs> so hot in here? Yeah. And you thought they smelled bad on the outside. Oh, I was going to say uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> this may and smell bad, kid, but it'll keep you warm. I feel like I paved that way to get over here unscathed, so. Oh, okay. So there weren't any on that. Yeah. My news. My... So you're looking pretty interested about that cannon. Don't fire it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a guy there that's like getting ready to fire the cannon. Yeah. But, well, but he's been ready to, but he's never had like a really good clear shot at any particular person. By as a cannon. Yeah, yeah. So it's totally smart that we all just conjugate ne next to each other in front of the cannon. <laughs> well, he, he's just now he's standing there holding his hands up. He, if he shoots at you guys with a cannon, he knows he's going to get killed. So he's not doing it. I smack Ralph in the back and go like, we got you, buddy. We got you. Let's go home. <laughs> Thanks. What's for yeah. dinner? That lizard. Yeah. That's what I was hoping. I'll go get yeah. him. You cannibal. And the employees have kind of snuck out of the tent the best they could because they, they don't want to get involved with the fight. Are the clown and cars actual moving vehicles? 
they're well. You mean in Roll Twenty, or I mean, they are they are actual clown cars that theoretically they've been used to drive around in the in the oh, wow. arena. But we wow. can't we can't do it because they're they're part of the JPEG. Okay, understood. No, I meant like <laughs> you could just get more vehicles. But yeah, that's fine. So Ralph uh, grabs this big mamma jamma by the tail, and I'm just gonna go ahead and. Just drag it on out with my plans. <laughs> okay. As a trophy. No, we're going to eat it. I'll make your oath. Uh, okay. Don't, don't rope me into that. <laughs> More for me. I'm going to eat what you it. want. I know I'm in a foreign land. I'll try their, their okay. customs. Yeah. You want to try drying that out and make jerky? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Let me just leave it right here for a bit. Gumbo, baby. Gumbo. Gumbo. Back to back. <laughs> All right. This is enough meat to last us a week. <laughs> Again with the us. <laughs> so as you make your way out of the tent, uh, the, the, the crowd is sort of parting. And it seems like everybody, employees and patrons alike, all want to just get out of your way. And uh, they, they're, you've got a clear path out of there. Good. Good. So uh, what do you guys say? Let's let's uh, head on back to uh, our base. Sure, uh, but when we walk out of here, we have to strut. <laughs> <laughs> and I just start walking towards the cars. Put on the yep. I've got the clown shoes, so I'm gonna squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> 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 Nothing like hiding in plain sight. Oh man. All right. Um, well, yeah. So you, you make it back to your to your vehicle, and Renfrew is driving because it's uh, it's it's a Squad Seventy Eight vehicle, and uh, he's got the keys. So Renfrew uh, starts the engine. You guys all kind of pile in. Pretty. Some of you are pretty beat up and tired, and you can you can throw the sabbaticus in the back if you want, but it's going to be it's really heavy. It's it's you know in between the sides of a grizzly bear. I got him in there. Should you're gonna probably, you're gonna need help if you want to try to get him into the truck. All let's, right, let's gut it so it loses the weight of the guts and doesn't spoil. Theoretically, oh. we could all get inside the clown car. It fits everybody. <laughs> I I think that only works with clowns. Yeah. Should have here is a clown. All the world is a clown. I know. So, uh, yeah, I go ahead and I'll take out my, uh, uh, what's it called? My, that blade I had, that sickle. Oh, I the have. sickle? Oh, yeah. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do what Smitty suggests and, uh, yeah. well, we gotta save okay. the intestines for Zoe. Yeah, so. make a, make a survival check. Survival check. Yeah. Ooh. It's Which right at the that? bottom. It's right at the bottom of your skills. Yeah. Here, plus seven, all right. Yeah, wow. Mm. Ralph's got a good survival. 15 plus seven is 22. All right, you're able in a pretty short amount of time, in just about five minutes, you're able to to, to gut this thing and and uh, haul its carcass up onto the uh, onto the truck. What I do? Renfrew, or do you have any objections at all to him putting this dead creature into the truck being a frog i think i've eaten worse i'm good <laughs> I went to gumbo or whatever that's great okay. all going. right then okay all right so, so yeah you you, you drive fun. back to the uh, squad 78 headquarters which is like an office building in uh, in um it's not in patashka is it and no it's van in f. Um, van f thank you oh yeah okay yeah 77 headquarters are in his order right right okay yes okay you guys are in a totally different dominion hey you're right. two dominions place. away yeah awesome okay um yeah and you make it back with with no incidents um you imagine that there's probably going to be some stuff going on with the authorities there uh at okay. some point but you don't have to deal with it right now awesome so i guess we're Rest just gonna up. get uh, our wounds dressed and eat some food and call um, 
Bentley and let him know that we got Ralph safe and sound. Well, kind of safe. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley, we got we got Ralph. Just want to let you know we're here in the offices of Squad 78. All right. Well, I already set up the, the transport for a return. So whenever you're ready, come on back. All right. Uh, does do uh, the other people from squad like Renfro? Is that the only person left from squad 78? No, um, uh, what, uh, what pageant storm is it? Span yeah, she's there. Pageant storm is there. And between okay. the two of them, they, uh, they get it set up to go to squad 77. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So I turned to Renfro and said, where's your uh, transporter? So you guys got a transporter here too? <laughs> That's how we got here. Because the base is supposed to have like a little transport. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right around the corner. Just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, so what do you guys say? Should we, should we hang out here for a bit or should we go back to our uh, base? Flip, no, let's go back. All right, yeah. Party over at Bentley's. I'm sure Ralph misses his bedroom. My stack of hay. Yeah. And, they... and Renfro, you, you feel like uh, you probably need to figure out with Jericho uh, what's happening with your squad, if it's going to get reformed or if it's going to... Um, but you don't get to automatically just switch to 77 you you gotta figure out you know you gotta talk to the headquarters well, stay first. put and yeah. sort things out you gotta wait for corporate yeah take care guys thank you renfro yeah. <laughs> you can come on a realistic job preview with us and have this meal <laughs> yeah eat <laughs> come check it out this evening <laughs> all right so we're going to the transport and we're going to go through the innova yeah yep that's scary yeah, uh, so whoever wants to make the Constitution or the Charisma saving throw with advantage, usually it's uh, Musette. Okay. I only got a plus four. Okay. Okay. Musette and, uh, and Ralph both have really high oh, Charisma. Oh, shit. I got, a, I got a natural 20. Plus oh, three. okay. You guys go through so fast you don't even see the Inobo. Wow. Uh, yeah, and you don't feel sick at all. You're getting, you think, you feel like you've kind of got the hang of this uh, teleporting business. Nice. You've never gotten lost in the Innovo for 200 years, even once. Thanks, Flip. Yeah. Hi, all Benji. right. We're back. <laughs> hey, so it looks like you've got Ralph back. What about the bird? Uh, oh, yeah, the bird. He flew uh, the coop. There you go. Uh, okay. I think he, he, I, I think he just kind of took off. I think he might have had enough of our adventures. I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess we'll keep an eye out for him. Yeah. At least we know he's probably somewhere in Venef now. Yeah. And it's late evening now. If you guys want to uh, to go to sleep, you can, and then we'll we'll pick it up uh, next time. Yeah. Do a long rest. There yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the. Did we already eat? Uh, yes. Well. Okay. Cool. I, yeah. Well, thanks for the food, Bentley. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bentley would probably. I don't know if he wanted to cook the sabbaticus. Did you bring that with you in the transport, or just give it to? In the car. Give right? it to. What's that? I brought it with me. Oh, I got all these the bones to work with. I got stuff to keep me occupied for several days. Oh, that's huge. Okay. <laughs> It's hogging kinda, up your whole basement. I kind of twist my nose at whenever I walk past like Ralph's room because it's starting to stink in there. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. This was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Long rest. Where are you? There we are. Yeah. Woo! Talk. I'm all healed up now. Got another <laughs> another successful adventure. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, so what's coming? What's coming up next, Ryan? Uh, well, um, I think we'll have well we'll have more. Uh, we'll have a new news episode coming up soon. I mean, that might even come before this one, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's tricky Parker doing Archive that. I've got some more new stuff. They just uh, just received the email from the Clive Barker Archive saying they received oh. more more stuff to put in the archive. So they kind of have pictures of all the stuff they got. Oh, so wow. That's, yeah. That's so that'll be one. The news. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have news. We'll have more classic commentaries. Land of the Dead we're going to get to at some point for the A to Z of horror commentaries. That's going to be fun. And what else we got? Uh I guess that's it for right now. Yep. Okay. All yeah, right. Jim, you'll probably, you might try to jump, jump on the land of the dead. Sorry, um, we missed the last. I keep one. missing them, and I'm totally th there. Just I'm, I just keep missing it because I really didn't don't. see Asteroid City that day. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Thanks. All Jill. right. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye, buddy. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.